Right, so we do have reports right now, uh, Vice President Gore, we do have reports right now that the Chinese are moving an aircraft carrier through the Strait of Gibraltar. Have you seen this? Really? This is interesting. Why have they done this? We're not, we're not too sure right now. We don't have any, we don't have any explicit data on it. Uh, it would just, we just got reports of this. I would like to dispatch a contingent of the U.S. Navy to escort them out of NATO waters and out of NATO territory immediately. We need they to ensure no that they have no reason to be there. They're very far away. They do they not. We, we, we don't know what is going on with this carrier, but this is, uh, if not outright aggression towards NATO, uh, certainly something we were not consulted on. And as such, uh, we're going to go ahead and provide an escort. Can you go ahead and do a quick post just saying that we're, we're sending a Navy to escort like the, the carrier? Yes, just like very short's fine. Wonderful. All right, how's it going guys? Really quickly, just intro, we're gonna get straight into things because this is a huge game. We're playing the US. This is the new Millennium Dawn roleplay game. It's huge. There's 60 something players in this game. We have with us today, uh, I have two co-ops. I have Secretary of Defense, who is Moose, or, uh, sorry, I apologize. Vice President Gore, later Vice President Cheney, who will be Moose, great RP -er. He's gonna be playing today as well. And then we've got Hanger as Secretary of Defense. So to start off with, I've both spoken both of you about what we need to do in the start. I'm going to immediately take a trip to France as soon as we get our set, set up though. Um, regarding the logistics, uh, Hangar, can you do all the military stuff, keep everything trained, all that kind of stuff? Uh, Moose, if you can do the economic building aspects of things, and then I can handle the Navy, uh, as well as, like, the, the research and the political stuff. Sound good? Yep. Cool. I will be having a meeting with, uh, Canada and Mexico very soon regarding NAFTA. Perfect. As soon as we get everything set up, Clinton's going on his, uh, his tour of Europe, which he wanted to do to reinforce her ties there before... Uh, the election is over. Bush is winning in the polls, but you never know. Gore, you, you may still win this. I know you have a lot it's of... Not, it's not looking very good, I'll be it's, honest. It's not. I've seen the poll numbers, so I'm going to be honest. It, it doesn't look great for you, but if you need more time to campaign, I understand. But do do remember, we've got a lot of... We can't let diplomacy go out the window for this election. Of course, of course. We have to uh, still complete our job here. Of course. Get all our tech uh, set up. Navy, I, I will not be taking care of it. So I can it's... handle the Navy, don't worry. That's a little early. Where is it? Foreign policy. Oh god, I forgot the equipment you have to set up the stars to US. Bear with me, guys. This will take a minute to set up. Alright, I think I'm gonna be going to uh, Washington, or no, sorry, to uh, Los Angeles now. Sounds good. Uh, Hanger, when you get a chance, can you make a new tank model for me when we get the XP for that? Is there anything specific you need? Just uh, go heavy on the heart attack. I'll make, a, I'll make a specialized one for next session as well. We'll get that. I'll get that planned right. out. Uh, I am allowed to recruit new generals, right? Cause... Yes. Yeah. Okay, everything.
Namely, we'll go four. All right, we'll see if we can get into trade deals for our materials to start off with, but it may take a little bit here. So we'll have to wait on that. A deal with the Canadians would be really nice on that. Um, so let me message Moose really quickly. I'm going to go do some Diplo. Okay, we'll ask them for that. In the meantime, we'll just we'll get some of these automatically. We're gonna work a bit with the Indians, so we'll do a couple on there. And then Indonesia we have a relationship with, so we'll get some off of them. Okay, looks good. Uh, we'll do We'll need these, but not quite yet. We well, yeah, have the Aliens uh, Gonzalez affair. Today, the Attorney General of the United States, Janay Reno, will have to come to a decision in regards to the fate of a young Cuban boy, Elian Gonzalez. He's currently staying in Florida with relatives and survived the dangerous escape from Cuba to the U.S. We are going to, um, we're, we're going to allow him to stay, of course, so we'll go for that. Okay, a few other things here. We'll do some lobbying in Congress. We'll do nothing else for now. We'll need PP for most of this stuff. Starting to exploit uh, petroleum reserves is important, so we'll go for that a lot of these things. We're not going to do any training missions yet, so we'll close all of those. Governmentally, we are not in the best of state. We are stagnating, so our first thing is we're going to save political power, and we're going to go into stable growth. There's the desyncs. Uh, we are running a pretty big surplus, so we're also going to need to raise taxes when we can. We'll probably wait until Bush is president in order to uh, go ahead and change that. For now, we'll just stay up to stable growth, and then we'll work on increasing taxes a bit under the Bush administration. So that will come along in around a year's time. Everything else is set up, so we are going to go ahead and go do some diplomacy. See if the... Uh Where are the French at? So many goddamn channels. It's gonna be a nightmare. Hello there. Hi, good day, Mr. Clinton. It is good to speak with you again, uh, President Chirac. It, it has been a time since I've been here in Paris, and uh, it's good to see him. I know I will not be in office much longer, but I feel like we had a very good working relationship, and I wanted to make one last formal visit with with the with the French people before uh, before my time comes. Hopefully you'll be speaking with Gore. I know you you met him on the last time we were here. Good man. He's he's busy. I'm afraid right now. But uh, if not, you'll be you'll be dealing with someone very different. So uh, thank you for receiving me here in Paris. Of course, of course, Mr. Clinton. Uh, I have to say I'm I'm, I'm quite sad that uh, you will leave office. Uh, so I feel like we had a good relationship. And, I do too. Uh, yeah, that's, I'm, I'm that's the, the, that. It's the nature of democracies like ours <laughs> that the turnover to, to new leadership is always necessary. And we hold our democratic values sacred, do we not, Mr. Chirac? We do. We do. Of course. 
Of course, Mr. Clinton. Of course. I must say, uh, uh, I want to start off with, uh, I know I, I came here primarily to discuss some more lighter topics, but I got to ask what, do you have any more intelligence regarding the, the uh, Chinese carrier that went through the Strait of Gibraltar? Not at this moment, I'm afraid. Uh, we have we have received rumblings that the Chinese are getting involved in Africa, uh, but at this time we do not know to to what extent. Um, we have information though that they are getting involved in uh, or they plan to be involved in the Congo, which might be a clue. <clears throat> it does appear that there is some Chinese uh, some Chinese influence going up there now we know that is historically french territory we we do know oh sorry i i, I misspoke there slip of the tongue uh, french influence has been strong in that region and we'd like to support you we, we don't want to obviously cut off anything that you're doing there uh so we'd be happy to support you obviously we want a working relationship with the chinese american manufacturing is heavily dependent on beijing and i believe to a large extent the french as well uh if, if i'm not mistaken yes uh they it is but uh we are looking into ways in making ourselves a little bit more independent in that regard. But oh, I'm very aware. Time, of course. President Chirac, uh, you, you've been quite uh, you've been quite loud about your return to Gaulism. I must say, uh, it caught me a little off guard. But uh, frankly, that's that's not going to be my uh, my administration's issue. It'll be more the next one. I would like to reinvigorate the, the the fact that we wish to have a working relationship with the French. And I'll say to you what I said to you on the phone uh, not too long ago, which is that we respect. French's ability to project power internationally as long as that does not encroach upon global interests and there is no imperialistic values such as what we're seeing in Portugal. If you wish to work more as a partner with the United States, that is something that we would both be interested in, given that NATO, as you know, has frankly been heavily dependent on us, both militarily and economically. And if the French were to shoulder more of the burden, it would offset our own costs, but also allow France to become much more of a player. Not that you aren't anymore, but you, you are certainly not a the great empire that France was in the past, of course. Uh, are you suggesting? I mean, I mean, first off, uh, I wanted to say we just got intel that the USS Cole got apparently bombed. Uh, we did. Uh, we, 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 in Sudan, we just got notified of that as well. Uh, I had a security briefing earlier. Uh, we, we will be de de demanding uh, that they pay for that, but that's that's for later. Of course, of course. I wanted to send my condolences uh, before I. Of course. Speak on, on your issue on the Gaulism. Um, well, um, we plan to, to have, uh, to, have to, to continue this uh, relationship we have with your country uh, on the same level as before, but um, under the conditions that France will be treated as an equal partner and that French interests will not be encroached on by the US or that we get bossed around, so to say. As you know well, we have great respect for the French people. We fought a war together twice. We've been involved on many international conflicts, providing security to the planet. We have always viewed you as a partner, most certainly, and we will continue to see uh, you as such. I don't know exactly what you want to clarify that statement. I mean, we've always been a close partner of the United States, and we've never, as far as I've been aware, certainly in my administration, pushed you around. I mean, do you see that differently, President Chirac? No, I don't see that differently. I'm just saying that, um, that France seeks a little bit more... Uh, how should I say? We were, as you put it, we are, we are not the great empire more that we once were. And uh, we yeah. do not want to return to, to colonialism, colonialism or any of that. But we want certainly to be returned to be a major player in the world and to influence world politics as a whole. Um, and I of understand. course, we have. And as I said, uh, we, we, we have a desire to work with you, but this is a bit of a case. Uh, of showing rather than telling. Again, the, the French nation is economically strong. You project power across Asia, of which uh, America is showing more and more interest in lately. But at the same time, you also do need to shoot in the burden of responsibility. Protecting the free world comes at a heavy cost, both in terms of diplomatic power, economic cost, and military resolve. If this is something France wishes to have more resolve in and be more involved in, we're happy to cooperate more heavily with you. Um, but that is a case of you needing to, again, as I said, sh shoulder both the cost and the burden. Of course. Is, um, is this something you're capable and willing to do? We are. Um, we just recently uh, announced that France is going to build a few more aircraft carriers to better operate in, in those situations and to better operate in the world and project power, uh, to have power projection in, in far regions of the world. Uh, the, the first carrier, which will be finished in roughly 10 months, the Charles de Gaulle, uh, uh -huh. aptly named, I, I might add. Um, 
is be is uh, productive finishing in 10 months and uh, economically we will try to be a little bit more independent from uh, china and other not so how should i say problem from other problematic powers i understand well, i do have to say i would like to speak with a few a few more countries before uh, i unfortunately will have to be out of office no i mean no disrespect but uh, i would just like mm -hmm. to say though you, you spoke a lot about gaullism in the press and i just like to have a, a, a formal behind closed doors meeting with you where we want to make it abundantly clear that we have and will always see france as a partner a good partner and one that we are happy to continue to respect it's a case of being involved in helping the united states and other democratic nations uphold uh, democratic nation building on the planet as long as you have the resolve we are happy to cooperate with you that sounds good mr clinton but does that mr bush see the same or uh, like the your your, your uh, the next president is he on the same we haven't spoken uh, since the elections begun i knew his father quite well we didn't see eye to eye of course on many things but uh he he, he likewise saw protecting democratic values is always coming first so as long as you are doing that i don't think you'll have any issues with bush Okay, uh, then I hope that uh, that holds true, Mr. Clinton. As I said, I don't want uh, the French-American friendship to be strained by uh, unfortunate circumstances. Of course. Very well. Uh, as I said, uh, we will continue to cooperate with you. Is there anything else you'd like to speak on? This is most likely the last time we will speak while I am president. Yes, uh, briefly on the Portugal issue. Uh, yes. the, I think you have seen those concerning uh, statements. Oh. We have, and as you said, uh, I, I was asked about that at a press briefing recently in the in the White House before I left for for Europe to, to to have these meetings. And we want to make it abundantly clear: any any attempts to to go back to colonial policies, a will will make Portugal most certainly uh, be in breach of NATO values, and we'll have to have a discussion if they'll retain that. And in addition, uh, any direct interference would result likely in U.S. action, whether that be economic leverage, sanctions, or potentially direct action. I don't want to put troops on the ground i'm sure i would hope bush would say the same but i think naval and uh and air options would definitely would be discussed and i hope the french would do the same of course of course uh, we, are, we are we are concerned on the same level and certainly if, if portugal shows aggressive actions uh in africa uh we also consider the use of force if necessary but certainly and 100 percent sanctions good and in uh, that case we, we see eye to eye on this yeah and of course, uh, exclusion of NATO. That that should be without uh, saying, will come without saying. Of course, I mean we can't obviously provide an opportunity of anyone who might want to interfere with a country like this and not under the protection of NATO. But uh, I think that is quite clear. Now, NATO is a conversation I'd like to have more of an in-depth talk with you. But unfortunately, I think that will more have to be done with uh, with President Bush. I'm afraid. Of course, of course. Anything I understand, else? Mr. Clinton. President Chirac. Uh, not at this time. Uh, other than uh, I wish you good luck in your future endeavors. And uh, it's you. really sad that it's, that it's the last time that we speak face to face. It's been an honor so working with you, President Chirac. I'm sure we'll meet again, but certainly not under the current circumstances we have now. I hope that I speak for the Bush administration, and I certainly speak for my own when I say France is one of our pinnacle valued partners, both in Europe and the whole world. And we have nothing but an intention to continue that. It's been good speaking yeah, with you. Good speaking with you, Mr. Clinton, and I thank you for your continued support. Wonderful. I have to find another VC because there's so many. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's, I have problems with that as well. Oh I was looking God. around for like five minutes. Who the fuck are the British? Oh boy, so many. I have to. I have to I deal with uh, Katano. <laughs> oh, he just moved. God damn it! He moved VCs. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Oh my God. 70 channels in here or something right now. <laughs> right, I have well, looking. But we'll, we'll go speak with the... Who the fuck is he? <laughs> it's... it's you, you can't... You can't find anybody. It's, you know what? Fuck it. I'm just gonna go speak with uh, the Germans. I'll see you later. Hello there. Hello. Greetings. I am, I am President uh, Bill Clinton. As you know, uh, I will not be in office much longer. But, uh... I, I would like to take this opportunity before I leave office to have uh, one last uh, meeting with you, uh, Schroeder, oh. as we have uh, worked massively in the past. And given recent okay. actions in Russia and large regions of the world, I think that we need to have a very, uh, a very good talk here. Yes. So, uh, what would you like to talk about? Well, primarily, I, I think before anything else, uh, I think we're going to need to speak a little bit on the on the Russian issue that is quickly beginning. Uh, to develop here. But before we do that, 
I just like to 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 ask about the current circumstances of Germany and reinforce America's ties in Europe. We've we've heard some some dangerous talk coming from more eastern aligned countries such as Slovakia, uh, which yeah. are making it clear that they they are looking away from NATO, which is quite worrying. And the United States would like to very frankly ask you, as this is a behind closed doors meeting, uh, that uh, what is the current state of Germany in regards to NATO, uh, cooperation with the U.S. and the, the future of the United States and uh, Europe's relationship? Well, um, ever since the conclusion of the... Who's, who's coming? This is uh, Hood Barak. May I speak with Bill Clinton later? Uh, yes, as soon as I am done here, I, I will I will take a trip to uh, Israel. We had planned on going there anyway. All right. But anyway, I'm waiting. I'm waiting in Jerusalem. So, um, well, our position in Europe is is one of self improvement before European improvement. That's the general uh, gist, and that's the general idea I've put ahead for myself. Mm -hmm. I believe that Germany still has a lot to build up from. I believe that we are still in a state of economic struggle and hardship coming out of the reunification. And I do believe that it's in Germany's best interest to maintain very strong and cooperative ties with the West, including the United Kingdom and the United States. Good. But um, for the time being, we have not really been advocating our foreign policy and it has not really been something of major concern to us. Well, However, where? you have you have brought up some issues to my mind. So is are you do you are you requesting that Germany perhaps uh, speak up more? Uh, yes, frankly, we, we need uh, uh, the perspective of my administration, as you know, is very pro-European. I, I think in if Gore wins, you'll see the similar situation. But Bush is leading in the polls, if we're being honest. And if he wins this election, uh, you're going to find a much more hardliner U.S. And I want to pave the way for that in the sense that uh, cooperation with Europe is preferred. But Bush has spoken extensively in his rallies about, frankly, uh, pivoting to Asia if we do not see cooperation with Europe, if, if what we see continues in Eastern Europe and things like that. Not an abandoning of Europe, of yeah. course, but America's economic and political power tends to be focused, uh, shall we say, very one directionally. The voters of the United States expect consistent goals in foreign policy. So okay. we just like to ensure that, that Germany is committed towards the ties we have built since World War II and will continue to maintain those. So you, so you effectively want us to inherit your European policy? Most well, certainly not. Point, what yeah. we are suggesting is we would like to hear Germany fighting harder to maintain both NATO relationships and EU solidarity, especially given that we've now seen the election of uh, Zuganov in Russia, a man very publicly suggesting that a return to some sort of Soviet system is necessary in, in Russia. We find this, frankly, to be laughable. It's the oligarchs continuing to, to cosplay as, as a real power. But regardless, it does create a problem, you understand. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree, you know, any any sort of revival of the Soviet Soviet Union, any abomination re remotely resembling that is abhorrent, and I will do everything in my power to oppose it. But like I said, uh, Germany at this hour is more concerned on self-improvement and ensuring it's that Germany can stay afloat, if that makes sense. I understand, but uh, we, we again, I'm really asking, like... I, we understand you want to prioritize your own economics, your own policy, your own politics. We get that. But the the relationships that come with the U.S. is not going to be a one-way one. Uh, and, and we, frankly, do want to hear you speak out more in Europe. You could prioritize your, your own uh, goals naturally. But uh, I, I really would, frankly, like to ask for you to be a little bit more outspoken and active with building these relationships up in Europe. We will never abandon Europe. I want to make that very clear. But, uh, I mean, U.S. capital flow can... can shift very dramatically of course and if we aren't seeing our relationships being upheld in europe we will pursue other options we we completely agree and sympathize with your position uh i i can have a talk with it with my cabinet about this and perhaps maybe we could start having a more uh proactive policy when it comes to europe but uh no guarantees can be made at this hour if that's that's uh, really unfortunate. Important. We understand that you're going to prioritize your, your own goals, but just remember, there's no reason the U.S. and Germany's goals can't align. And uh, if not, again, I, I, I would be happy to continue to cooperate with you, but I want to make it clear that may not be the case if we get a Bush presidency. So um, before I leave, I just hope that, that Germany uh, will be putting a very firm stance regarding any attempts by Russia to to invigorate any any sorts of communist policies in Eastern Europe. We, we hope that you're committed to that as well as cooperating with Poland. Good absolutely absolutely um if if we um 
do change our minds and decide to be a little bit more proactive, we will let you know effect immediately. And That's good to hear. Changes. In that case, uh, Chancellor Schroeder, it's been a pleasure working with you. I like to think that we have done a lot in, our, in both of our tenures, cooperating together. And uh, again, this will be our last meeting as, pre as president and chancellor. And uh, it's been an honor. You too, Mr. Clinton. Have a nice day. You as well. I need to find another VC. I apologize. There we go. Uh, Greetings. Hello. Is this a bad time, uh, Prime Minister Blair? Uh, uh, it, 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 no, no, not, not at all. Wonderful. Uh, as you know, I'm not going to be in office for much longer, but until uh, the voters choose to elect a new president, I will continue to do my duties, especially in terms of foreign policy. I am here uh, primarily to reinvigorate our ties with European countries. As the talk we've okay. begun to hear from some NATO members regarding perhaps not the need for, for such an institution is very worrying to my administration and I'm sure will be worrying to the next one. And we just like to speak frankly with uh, with, with, with Britain regarding this. Oh, um, I mean, the defense secretary might have some words, but Tony Blair will, will, will speak first on this regard. Uh, we have no, we have no, we are also concerned by such uh, uh, ideas of getting rid of NATO and things like that. We believe that NATO's, uh, of course, was created as a as a means to stop the Soviet Union. Uh, seeing as the election of the Communist Party of the Russian Federation has recently happened, um, such tensions might need to be reconsidered in the future. Um, furthermore, along a similar regard, we just believe that uh, if if the classic Cold War tensions of the world are indeed over, NATO's role should not be to dissolve, but rather to evolve into a, a new role um, on the global stage. That being, of mm -hmm. course, to protect and support democratic institutions of the globe. That's good to hear. Uh, we, we, we think that it is pivotal that uh, the United States and uh, the United Kingdom, which have been long allies, as you well know. Uh, we've, we've, you know, as, as the famous Winston Churchill once said, there's a special <laughs> relationship between our two nations. Fully agreed. And, and, uh, and I want to see this continue moving forward. Now, regarding... Uh, re continuing to keep our ties strong with Europe. We've spoken with Germany, and frankly, I will be honest, I do find it very worrying, the lack of resolve I've heard from them in regards to maintaining the NATO and even the EU situation in Europe. Uh, they even suggested at one point uh, potentially taking on that responsibility from the US, which we had not been suggesting. Perhaps a slip of the tongue, but worrying certainly to myself that we may see uh, a begin of a ra disraveling of what has been built in Europe. We hope that Britain can really take take uh, the front in terms of Europe and calling for solidarity and cooperation, as especially yeah. given the situation we're seeing in Russia, that seems key to, to my government. Yeah, of course. Um, we'll uh, we'll try to extend our hand in, in Europe and try to work with the EU and, of course, maintain our relationships abroad as well. Um, try to strike some kind of equal balance between those two kind of things, of course. Most um, certainly. Uh, another matter, uh, while I am here, we, we do see our economic ties with Britain and the United Kingdom as absolutely pinnacle and wish to see if you would enter into some mutual investment with us. Our government is running a surplus for the first time. Uh, we're, currently running a, we're currently running a deficit, so we'll need to reconsider such an offer when we're running a surplus. Given that we want to really establish ties uh, with, with Britain, how would you feel about us investing, say, 50 billion into your economy now under the assumption you'd, you'd uh, invest that back when you have the budget for it? Yeah, of course. Um, we'll keep okay. uh, we'll keep we'll keep that in mind. I mean, do you want me to, or do you not me want me not to? Yeah, yeah, yeah go, yeah, no, 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 go for it, and then we'll just make sure to pay you the fifty billion back when we get our economy back back in order. Very well. We will write up the plans for that. We'll have some uh, American uh, corporations continue to expand into those regions. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Well, I just want to touch base with you on this, Mr. Blair. This will be our last meeting before uh, you'll be speaking with a new president. Hopefully, my VP Gore. You know him well, but uh, perhaps not. So. I it's been good working head. with you, and uh, again, it's. Uh, I, I hope that our special relationship is continued to be maintained. Of course. Okay. Yes, uh, is, uh, Israel, you want to talk now? Yes. Cool. I'm going to hop up to the White House. All right. Hello there. Yes. Uh... So, Bill Clinton, as you may uh, be aware of the U of the recent UN General Assembly uh, resolutions, uh, as I have informed you already, these are nothing but lunatic behavior coming from the Arabic states. The binationalist state is very, very much uh, a fantasy. 
And uh, although we would like peace to be achieved, and we are actively fighting for it, mm -hmm. so, such things, I would expect you to also uh, decline it, to vote against it. Because it would, it would just not work. President Barack, I, I want to assure you, as we said to you in our, in our recent communication, we fully back the nation state of Israel in the Middle East. These calls unilaterally from these nations calling for mm -hmm. the, 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 the creation of this, this system in Israel is, is simply not something we'll even entertain. I want to assure you that we will fully back your, your government as our pinnacle partner in the Middle East. And uh, as long as you, you wish for things to remain a certain way, you will have our full backing. Uh, we, we do not wish to break the status quo and we'll continue to be a close cooperative uh, organization with, with uh, a nation with, with Israel. And you have our full support. That is amazing to hear. And on another note, Israel is heading towards an economic uh, stagnation as uh, we are losing a lot of money and our debt is increasing by the weeks and we are in dire need of investments from abroad. Would that we would, be we would be more than capable, given our, our healthy surplus in, in government right now, to be able to invest in Israel. However, the America doesn't like to do anything for free. We already give you massive subsidies uh, every year as part of our budget, so we're happy to give you some for free. But uh, a, a mutual investment from Israel back into the U.S., as you do have many businesses here, would uh, would, would be desired as well, if you're able to do that. Uh, I would be able to do in the future, but right now it's just not possible. I'm losing like a billion a week. In, my economy okay, in that case, uh, I will go ahead and uh, let's see where do you have the slots for it. I will go ahead and invest 82 billion into uh, Israel, given that we do wish to obviously not have you enter economic hardship. Uh, given the assumption that in the future you will return that to the United States in investments, or at least part of it. Is this uh, agreed? Uh, oh. Yes. Very well. We can do that then. Well. We will expand uh, American multinational corporations and their uh, access and activity within Israel. Hopefully moving outwards from there into other Middle Eastern markets. So we can absolutely do that. Would you like to us to give uh, you a direct governmental bailout in terms of money? We can do that too. Uh, if we request such, then uh, yes. Okay, because we can go ahead and like, provide you direct economic stimulus as well. Out of RP, I don't have the, the decisions for it. No, I know, but I can sit it. You're yeah. going to get an event right now. Hmm. And we'll also yeah. give you a, a small loan to offset your, your debt as well. We'll go ahead and prop up your economy and allow you to go ahead and rebuild as quickly as possible. Given the pressure we're seeing on you, uh, we don't want them to have any ammunition is, to use uh, against you, given the circumstances. This is a Mexican delegation. Yes, uh, I'm currently in talks with yeah. Israel, uh, so this will have to wait. Uh, but regarding... Uh, I, I shall leave into another room. Very well. Uh, regarding regarding this, we, we will, of course, we'll do everything we can to, to maintain your economic... Uh, prosperity as military stability comes after economic prosperity. But again, we do ask that you return that in the future. Is there anything else you need to discuss with us? Um, no, not really. Very well. If you need uh, anything else from us, uh, do not hesitate to ask. And as always, the American license arsenal of the United States military is always open to uh, to your government. Oh, uh, thank you very much, Bill Clinton. Thank you. Your uh, your help is truly appreciated here. Of course, America and Israel's relationship will always be maintained, and uh, I'm sure Bush will feel the same, or or more. Mm -hmm. oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Hello, Mr. Clinton. This ah. is a representative of South Korea. Welcome, Ambassador. Welcome. Uh, we were surprised to see that you refused our, our attempts at investment, given we, we thought we'd worked out a deal with you previously. Uh... I thought I accepted it. It might be that uh, you refused a it. confusion regarding how many people are currently going in and out of Korea business-wise. We can um, do so again if you'd like. Uh, no, it's running for me. Oh, well, okay. Don't question it then. Um, no, no. We would like uh, to come and thank the Clinton administration for this investment, uh, as well as inform uh, Mr. Clinton that uh, the budget... Uh, for the uh, mutual investments, uh, America is part of phase four of that plan, which means that you'll be receiving uh, your money uh, towards the end of 2000. Uh, and, you, you did make uh, a deal with us regarding investments into California and the Rust Belt. We are curious why those haven't happened yet. Uh, monetary, uh, not monetary, uh, manpower restrictions currently, as we already have roughly uh, the entire uh 
construction force. Uh, yes, that and, and I, to... we have to speak about this because it seems to me that you are prioritizing other nations uh, economically over the United States, which is a real issue for us. We have had a very good relationship economically with South Korea up until this time, and we frankly just do not understand why you are prioritizing other countries over us. Uh, the acquisition of the materials uh, required was very difficult to get to South Korea, and as such, it will be even more difficult to get it to America. Uh, it is with uh, scheduled within our budget within the next uh, about 45 days. Uh, the first shipments into California will begin. But uh, as I said, it uh, has been forcibly delayed uh, towards the end of 2000. But the projects are coming. The issue here is we know that you have done extensive economic ties with Russia, which is your prerogative, but it seems to us that you are not only prioritizing them over us, but are continuing to do so despite some very radicals taking government. I, I did wish to ask while you were here, we do hope that you plan to uh, roll back many of the deals you've made with Russia regarding the emergence of an, an extreme faction in their politics. Uh, regarding what in the extreme faction? Uh, this deal was made with Vladimir Putin. I'm aware, but it is currently a Zuganov government, a man who expresses a desire to return to the Soviet Union's ways of the past. A nation I don't uh, need to remind you that took very hostile action uh, against South Korea in the past. Yes, I agree. But the what has already been uh, laid down uh, that was started in 1999 cannot simply be uh, removed from there. Uh, there's no plan currently to any expansion, but uh, saying that we would have to remove something that already exists uh, seems quite a bit forceful, doesn't so it? So I just want to clarify that. So you have prioritized your economic deals with Russia over the United States and delayed the agreements we've made, and in addition, you will continue to maintain these despite there being a very extreme faction in charge of the Russian what? government. Am I getting this correct? Uh, no, as the South Korean government did not uh, communicate with Clinton uh, regardless, we communicated with uh, the president-elect Bush. Yes, but you, you were making deals with the United States regardless of who it was. Uh, Bush isn't even president yet. He hasn't won the election. I know that he and his father seem to think that he's already won this election, but that's not the case. He still has to beat my vice president. Uh, yes, but... As you said, the agreements that we made was not with the Clinton government. It was with the Bush uh, that we made these agreements to uh, cooperate in uh, George America. George W. Bush does not currently control any part of the United States of America. This is the Clinton administration. You made a deal with the United States. I, I'm not sure why you are going around. I, I, frankly, I need to talk with George W. Bush about making foreign policy actions before he's even sworn in. But regardless, even if you still made a deal, you are prioritizing it with the Russians still over the United States, as far as my administration sees it. Uh, then if that is how you see it, I will not try and force uh, a change in your viewership. Uh, do you wish to continue along with the investment in California? I mean, do you intend to continue it? I mean, are you, so I just want to clarify, you will continue to maintain all your relationships with Russia, even with uh, the, the, the path that they have taken. We will not be dismantling uh, the pipeline that is already majority finished at this point, uh, but there's no further cooperation noticed between me and the Russian Federation. That's your prerogative, but I will say it, it is quite disappointing to hear from South Korea, a nation that uh, we, we, we thought better of in understanding the geopolitics of, of Asia. Uh, while it does worry us that they uh, seem to be going back to oh, the uh, ways of the USSR, uh, the agreement in start of the construction was not made during Zuganov. Uh, while it is unfortunate that they seem to be going more towards communism, uh, they have not, as of the moment, uh, claimed any. I, I understand. Fr frankly, I, we find this very disappointing, policy. and uh, it, it, this is your choice, though. That being said. Um, we will have to, to, to go ahead and, and wish you a good day. I, I don't have much more else to say here. Working, working with someone who's not even elected over the president of the United States and prioritizing uh, a very dangerous Russia is disappointed. We value our ties with South Korea, but we hope you will do some reflection uh, given the circumstance. Uh, I see. Uh, you have a good day, Mr. Clinton. You as well. All right, we're doing a rehost right now. Yeah, so out of RP, I did have a talk with him with Bush before all this happened, but... Give Mexico is AFK. Uh, oh, no, no, he's no, back. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Oh, God. 
Oh, greetings. While we do the rehab, so we can keep oh. doing this. Uh, greetings. Dog, you got so much background noise. No, Spain does. Spain, can you mute? Sorry, sorry, sorry. Greetings. This is uh, this is obviously welcome to the White House. Uh, we've, we've, I think we have spoken before, but it has been quite a while. Sorry, clarification. Who are you addressing? I mean, you. Uh, you, I, I, President Brazil. Brazil. I'm just here to tell you, Mexico, that the Wii House is that thing, so you could join. Oh, cool. All right. <clears throat> Thank you for your hospitality, President Clinton. Um, Greetings, representative from Oman. Anyway. Uh, where is the Rio stuff? I'm not handling that. I'm not running this game, so you'll need to go ask someone else. It's... It's Sniper 21. It's, it's not back up yet, either. They haven't posted it. So anyway, please continue. Mm, yes. Um... We have gathered up a few nations. We, we, I know we still have to conduct an after greet in agreement, which we will do after we finish this meeting. We just wanted to ask opinion of your government. We were conducting um, a meeting, Caribbean nations, a few Caribbean nations, and the, the argument of Cuba came up. Uh, we asked the United States if they'd be interested to reinstate Cuba in the uh, Organization of American States. If your government would be open for that. The Clinton administration has been very clear that we have no intention to roll back any of the uh, restrictions we have placed on Cuba for the, the actions of that government. We still see it as a radical one and will not cooperate with it. I'm sure uh, both Gore and, and Bush would have a similar mindset when it comes to that. Of course, of course, but we're not talking about rolling out sanctions. You you can keep, your government can certainly keep them. We're talking just about reinstating them into this organization for closer trade ties, and, but most importantly, just to reintegrate them. We believe that this will benefit uh, both the Cuban people, the open trade with, at least with the Latin nations who benefit them, certainly. And this will uh, lead to a... Uh, you are... You, Latin democracy. American nations are more than capable of having individual ties economically and politically with Cuba. That is their prerogative. But the United States will not condone uh, any mutual trade blocks or trade deals that we might have, which will involve Cuba. That's a non-starter. Uh, you, your government will still be called up to vote in because you are part of the organization of the American states. But we understand your position. We just thought it was important to communicate with all members individually. I mean, we obviously do not support that, and, and we'd have to, to do some serious rethinking of perhaps relationships with countries that would support such a thing. Very well. Well, then we shall uh, we shall contact you after when the time for the vote comes. And we also need to organize the uh, after meeting. Unfortunately, right now, I'm... Uh, I will most likely be spinning my, my, my vice president at that meeting, as there are some other things that I will need to do, but uh, we, we will I, certainly have a representative there. Thank you, thank you. Then we just need to contact uh, the uh, Prime Minister of Canada, uh, Vice President Al Gore. Yes, hello. Anything else I can do for you before you before you leave? No. Very that well. is everything. Thank you for your hospitality. Thank I you for, you for your time. Man. <clears throat> ah. Uh, Vice President Al Gore, I believe we should, uh, for the NAFTA meeting, go to speak with uh, Prime Minister yeah. Tahoe. I, I would like I to speak very briefly with my, with my Vice President really quickly, though, yes, before I, he goes. I will do that. Course, uh, go, go to them. I, I will... Um... Of course, of course. All right, there. I already did have some meetings with uh, uh with uh, Canada. Hello. Ah, Gore. Welcome. Mm -hmm. I hope the the meetings went well. Uh, yes. Uh, we have strengthened our relations with Turkey. Uh, Turkey is not excited to see a communist uh, leadership in Russia, and um, we um, are ready to uh, stand with them on any issues. That's good to hear. They they will, I hope, support uh, I I any. The resistance we might have to Zuganov in, in the Caucasus or anything like that. What did you speak about? Uh, one thing is Armenia. They uh, reported that Armenia was having very high, hostile dialogue with them. And mm. they are part of the CSDL. So they are worried. We did reaffirm we would defend a, um, them in any Armenian attack. As well as they expressed interest in, in um, getting a nuclear energy to replace their dependence on oil. I informed them we could give them some of our... Uh, technology, but we did not want any countries to kind of think that we could potentially be giving them nuclear, uh, like, weapons. No. Uh, I mean, for, so further we, military cooperation with, with Turkey is certainly what we want to do, but we can't just start handing out blueprints to the yeah. American military, especially given they're not right. quite a stable country yet. They wanted nuclear energy, and I told them that Japan, well, they, they said Japan might be a better option, as Japan is known for not being uh, supportive of nuclear, you know, nuclear weapons. 
That being said, I don't think Turkey getting their hands on any sort of nuclear materials, regardless of its uses, wise. Yes. I mean, already we saw what happened with Iran when, when, when they mm -hmm. when they wish to pursue a similar course of action. So we have of to be course, careful uh, here. Yep. I I did not offer them anything. I just said that Japan would probably be a better option, and be with at that. And um. I did you speak with it. anyone else on your trip, or did you only get a chance to speak with Turkey? I spoke with Canada, and uh, we got to uh, we did some mutual investments in Good. the uh, civilian industry and uh, we built up relations of course uh now mexico is here and we will go speak with them and negotiate the nafta treaty did did you get a deal with the with the canadians regarding resource importation for for a, for a minor trade deficit uh yes we do have a, a trade deal ongoing with Good. The resources. Okay. in that case we're going to go ahead and move all of our imports primarily from uh, canada and go ahead and ask for for trade backs on that yeah all right bro. i will just i'll Wonderful. go to them and just inform them in the nafta meeting and just read right, from that. Good. Uh, is that it? Is that it? Then I can. I think so. I think we're good. All right. Very well. I will go to Mexico and try to get Canada in here. Greetings. Oh, uh, oh, uh, ah, hello there. This is a this is a phone call from President Bill Clinton, uh, Secretary uh, Zimin. Zimin, it yeah. is. Uh, we haven't spoken at a time, but I think a, a conversation is warranted given some recent events that. Uh, my country's been a little worried about that we've seen from from Beijing. Uh, you've talk ah, you're talking that well, yes, I think there has been a bit of a communi uh, miscommunication. The the car uh, you're talking of the uh, lone ship that's been tugged by Correct. You we currently of course have a contingent of the US Navy uh, escorting that, that vessel um on its journey, but we we really were shocked to not have received any communication from your government regarding it and its movement through NATO waters. You understand that, I mean, that, that could have been a pretty bad diplomatic incident. You, you made no communication with my government nor any NATO allies. Yes, I uh, and for, I had told one of my advisors or one of my ministers to go and talk to you about it, but it seems he did not. The He most certainly did not. The, uh, the ship itself has no arms on it. The... Uh, you are welcome to inspect it if you wish. Uh, it is simply just being towed to China as we the, brought the it. The issue off the... here is not whether or not it had weapons on board. The issue is Chinese sent a naval vessel without any proper communication with my government through waters that we defend. I mean, I would say we would have been in, uh, in our right to to do quite a lot there, which we chose not to because we don't wish to strain relations with your government. But frankly, uh, this is when we need to have a serious conversation about things. Now, you were dealing. With, with a fairly reasonable man, I would say. Uh, my administration has prioritized diplomacy and cooperation with China over all things. But as you know, Bush is winning in the polls, and he has made very clear in his campaigns he's going to take a harsh tone with your country. And I want you to take a moment to seriously consider the precedent you're setting moving into that administration. Chairman. Yes. Uh, uh, yes, you have, and thank you for reminding me. I will make sure that a situation like that does not happen again. I will. I am deeply... We would like to formally request that, that Beijing does uh, make a formal apology. It doesn't need to be to the U.S., but just to, to, to NATO states as a whole. Yes, we will definitely make a formal apology to the NATO water nations that we may have alerted with this. And rest assured, it will not happen again. I, but yes, we will apologize to NATO for this incident. That's, uh, that's good to hear. I also would like to, to have another frank conversation with you. Uh, the, the, the situation in Russia involving the, the shocking victory of Zuganov in the elections there and the ousting of Putin is very concerning to my government, and we're curious to see what Beijing's thoughts were on that situation. Beijing has a rather, despite our official congratulations, which was not a real congratulation, it was just us saying, oh, good job on winning the election. China is a bit disuncertain to the rise of the Communist Party of Russia as we as we do fear that the that the Russian people may want to go back to the USSR it is of the communist he's Russia's made that mind. very clear his intentions in his campaign were clear I mean again the Soviet Union is a failed state we all know what yes. it was the ending of the Soviet Union was laughable it was a victory of Western systems, democracy, and capitalism in, in every single way. 
They did not go out with a bang, except for their failed attempt to invade Afghanistan. And in the end, they were brought down to nothing more than corruption, tyranny, and oligarchs. They still exist in Russia. What he's trying to create is a farce. So I hope Beijing will be taking a, a firm line to ensure that whatever of a joke they are trying to do here is, is firmly pushed back against. Yes, we have been making moves in uh, certain former Soviet states, ones that Russia has well, be frankly, abandoned and left to die of their own wishes. We have been helping the Central Asian nations such as Uber Kazakhstan and Turkmenistan. We will not, China will not allow the Soviets to subjugate and enslave the former Soviet states of the East. I will not allow the Soviet Union to go down a path of mistreatment of the people. Good. I, I hope that Beijing and Washington will, will, will stand firm on this. Yes, and if you... Uh, that's, oh, sorry, that's my co-op. Sorry. Um, um, sorry. Sorry. Um, I will... Yes, you will... You can ha Yes, we will definitely be supportive of... As you will... If you will be, if you mind my words, a sort of watchful eye or a containment policy on the Soviets' plans to take over states of the former Eastern Bloc. Does, does Beijing, if this continues and they and they continue to move further towards uh, a Soviet rebirth, will you continue to maintain your economic and military ties with Russia? I mean, you have no. many military cooperation agreements, and you import massively from Russia. We understand that China is always in need of large amounts of oil strategically, but given the danger Russia presents, we, we hope that you will be considering alternatives. Yes. China, I have made, uh, we've had a party conference of the CCP, and it is quite clear that if the Soviet Union attempts to forcefully reunify, China may go back to the cold situation of the Sino-Soviet split. It's good to hear. We will. We have also talked to them, and we have. We also do not recognize their communist party to be akin to the Maoist party. They are revisionists, and they have quite clearly are going to use this corruption to. Well, they're, they're oligarchs. It's, it's, it's oligarchs as it always is. Yes. Simply continuing to again. It's it's nothing more than than. Then a, a, a unfunny joke that they're attempting to, to bring this back. But we're glad to hear that China will, will put their foot down and not cooperate with this madness and um, that you will pursue other options. Now, the United States has built a good working relationship with you, we would like to think, up until the recent incident in Gibraltar. But we are, my administration is very worried regarding uh, what we have heard about as this rise of these conservative Maoists in your country. Uh, Truman Zeman, we, we have worked very closely, and, and I like I have a great deal of respect for you. I like to think that the American people do, and we would just like to, I would like to be hopefully assured that these extreme conservatives who wish to go back to the old way of doing things in China hopefully will not gain any traction. What's what's the situation with that? See, well, the sit, well uh, it's more of a free factions fa uh, issue. I am doing what I can to keep a united front of all parties of the Congress. Of course, unity does keep a nation working. Uh, we are, The issue that we are occurring is that I will be having to slowly deal with the military and I will have to, of course, see where their loyalties lie. I understand, but I think many investors in America, I've, I've had numerous calls recently from many uh, CEOs, heads of large multi-conglomerate corporations in the US who have seriously large amounts of investments in Chinese manufacturing, uh, who are growing very concerned of if their investments are at stake. Obviously, we don't wish to just pull out entirely, but I don't know if you've heard the speeches. George W. Bush is campaigning on the platform of, of pivoting manufacturing out of China, given the conservative hardline talk we've been hearing from you. And is there anything you can do to, to, to try and bring some clarity to, to Western investors, many yes. of which are in my own country. Yes. In actual fact, we, I myself, while I'm in good health, I will be, I will be pushing forward to the Congress, a law that forbids them from, from nationalizing or attempting to seize company assets 
that have been invested into China. What guarantees do American investors and in, in Western markets have that that will be the case? I could pass a law tomorrow that would do all manner of things, but if there's a new government in a year from now, Bush could could roll that back. And we both know the CCP is even more capable of doing those sorts of things. Is there what guarantee can you give to Western investors that 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 will last, even if you undergo some pretty radical change politically? My guarantee would be that in that I, my guarantee is that my successor will follow those lines you can't guarantee that we both know that yes again i, I have great respect for you chairman and i hope i i seriously hope from the bottom of my heart that we see your successor take power but we both know that that is not necessarily going to be the case there's no guarantee of that yes like i said there's other than putting laws in place there is not a lot of and making sure that that harm, no harm comes to these companies. There is not 100% a lot I can do without tipping the, the United Front boat. I understand. We, we would have one option we'd like to propose to you. Hmm. Given the fact that you are capable at any point of seizing many factories and investments that America has placed in China, and we put a lot in, we you certainly cannot match that and you don't have the economic capacity to, but Washington, would be preferential to the Chinese government spending a fair degree of money to place investments in the United States, ones which, in the case of China seizing American assets, we would likewise have some recourse in to make back some of that money. As such, we would like to formally request that Beijing uh, spend a large degree of money in investing into American manufacturing, as we are looking to bring that back in the United States. Obviously, you will not be able to match what we have put into your country, but I think uh, putting putting money back into the U.S. and giving us recourse in the event of that situation would be valuable and would do much, I think, to to make both hopefully the American people and the Chinese people see a, a degree of cooperation. Yes, we will. Ha I will happily agree to that. But the issue is, what if you say that Bush is high in the polls? Uh, and I, I, I wish that Gore would win, but it seems not the case. What is to stop the Bush administration from just straight up doing what you said that could happen in China? In America, we do things very differently. We have many, many times we have had issues with foreign countries, but the dramatic actions a nation may take, let alone a legitimate major state such as China, in order for, excuse me, the U.S. government to take action like nationalizing assets of foreign nations is rather extreme. Now, Bush will talk, he has talked a lot in his campaign speeches regarding a pivot from China, the dangers of both now Russia and China. I mean, he just had a, he had a rally earlier this week where we heard him speak very plainly host, uh, in a hostile manner towards the Russian Zuganov administration. But that doesn't mean that our country has the ability to, let's say, nationalize Chinese assets. We, we simply just don't run like that. Now, your country, the CCP, is given broad political authority, but uh, Chairman, I know you understand American politics better than many of our own senators and congressmen at times, if we're going to be honest, and you know well yes. that that simply is just not an option for our country, unless well, China was to do something just incredibly radical. Well, okay, we will agree to the investment into America. I will make sure that the right companies uh, go into America. Um, but I, w I would wish to ask that when Bush does win, that maybe he looks at these talks as well. That I, I, he... I would be happy to, to, as you know, every president, when he leaves office, has to talk with his, his successor. And I'll make it very clear that one of the things I've been trying to do in this last year of office, as you know, I'm a lame duck president. I can't get any domestic policy done at home. We both know that. The situation regarding the unfortunate circumstance that has... Uh, dogged my administration for the last year um we don't need to go into details on it i can assure you that it was all lies my, my wife fully supports me of course but it, it has made it so i can't do much at home and i've been pursuing foreign policy which can hopefully uh facilitate a smooth transition to an alternative government now if if gore wins we're fine we can move forward with things all right but again i'm a practical man and i understand that that may well not be the case um and i would be happy to make this very clear to him my my idea here is that we basically make our relationship too big to fail. Now, for the U.S., that's already the case. We place so much money at the Chinese manufacturing at this point that uh, we can never fully pull out. We we have our economy so closely linked. 
But if we're going to be honest, the same is not true for China. So I would hope if we could come to a deal here today is we could make it such that our economies are so closely tied together that it is almost a situation of economic mutual destruction, you understand. If either of us was to take radical economic action, it would impact both of us so badly that's no longer possible. We don't have to like each other politically, but we need to assume and assure that extreme economic uh, policy is not an option. That's what I, I would like to do here today, Chairman. Yes, uh, yes, we will uh, agree with that. I see where you're coming from, uh, pre Mr. President. Uh, Good. We will invest. Uh, how much would, uh, well, how much would the U.S. want in investments from China into, into their sectors? We we would like to see really how how much is the Chinese CCP government capable of investing in the United States? That's the question. We can invest about. 100 to 200 billion probably into us how about you do 200 billion investments in the united states and we respond with 100 mutually given that we already have an extensive amount with you already we could go ahead and put 100 in you you would put 200 in us and we continue this until such time as as uh i'm no longer in office which i believe will probably only be that one investment deal but i think it would be a good precedent to set those jobs that you would be putting into the U.S. will make it so Bush would have a much harder time trying to convince Congress and the American yes. people to cut relations with you economically. Um, well, what, what state would you want these to be in? Given that uh, we have to put pressure on Bush if he does come in office, if you can invest in the Rust Belt rural American region of the Midwest, I, I think that would do a lot to, uh, it, it would uh, do a lot. Yes. Yes, we will definitely invest into. We may. We will invest in Ohio or like. We'll definitely invest Ohio, into those Pennsylvania, states. and Indiana or Illinois would, would be preferable. And likewise, I'll see about a hundred billion in investments. I'll work with some of our multinational corporations that are investing. Many of which are, frankly, have been talking about pulling out of China uh, to provide some government incentives economically in terms of tax reliefs and things like that to expand their their corporate uh, headquarters in Beijing. Would that be agreeable? A hundred billion or so. Yes, that would be definitely agreeable. We will invest our 200 into Pennsylvania. Good. Yeah. Uh, this, this I think, is, is great progress, and we're glad to hear that you open this, Chairman. I really do hope that we don't see radicals of any capacity having influence in the CCP, but uh, I can't speak for that as myself, as we, the Bush administration, I think, will be, will be changing things quite dramatically, not for the better. Uh, nothing I can do but besides support my VP, of course. Yes, but uh, like I said, if we, like I said, we've agreed if these investments go through, Bush, like you said, Bush will have a hard time to national or to w remove Chinese companies that are providing the common American c citizen jobs, basically. Exactly. That's my mindset on it. I trust in the American voters. They elected me twice to serve them, and, and I, I like to think I understand them very well. And uh, if, if we could provide a good reason for them not to take radical action, I think that we can prevent some very poor decision-making economically in the future. Yes, you have uh, my agreement. Good. In that case, it, it has been great speaking to you, Chairman. I am glad that the misunderstanding regarding your carrier in Gibraltar can be solved. We look forward to seeing your apology to the NATO uh, nations affected by that. And we hope that the... Again, I, I don't want this getting to the public, but uh, let's, let's call this economically mutually assured destruction... Uh, is agreeable to both of us and i i hope yeah. that both our governments will pursue that in the future as well yes i hope so and i look for and if bush if bush does win i do hope that maybe he will make talks and see as well i hope so too but i can't make promises for my future administration just as you can make promises for yours yes well, it's been a pleasure speaking with you chairman if we don't have a chance to speak again before uh the uh, the election is over and uh Actually, I think it might already be over. What's the date on November? No, not quite yet. Uh, uh, if we don't speak again, it's been a pleasure working with you, Chairman. And I do hope that uh, that China and the United States both remember that we prosper more when we work together. Yes, I hope so as well. All right. Thank you for your time, Chairman. It was good to speak with you. Yes, thank you. Uh, I was going to ask is um, potential purchase of either equipment or license well, to equipment the person is here i think oh he sorry was... about that i i had a i had a call with uh with chairman zimin uh that was hmm. i do not oh, want to keep you waiting no ambassador worries. i apologize about that i, I, no worries, I got sir, okay. by the way clint uh we got enough busy man you got what nafta no that Na didn't
Nest has been passed. Yes. Fantastic. That is great to hear. Uh, we'll have a we'll have a legacy gore regardless of what happens in the election. Uh, okay. Can you fill me in on your? Hmm? No, hopefully that'll do well with the uh, American electorate. But uh, yes, Australia was talking about a potential uh, trade agreement as well as um, some licenses of military equipment. I believe Australia. Yes, uh, I, like I was saying, I am weary about the buildup of not only Russia and uh, also China, um, just as they're they're new leaders. I'm concerned for the safety of my own country. Certainly, and am interested in potentially purchasing equipment and or licenses for uh, our own production. Before I uh, discredit anything my VP has said, as hopefully Gore will be our next president, uh, did you already make any promises or, or have any discussions? Gore, what was no. your opinion on this? No? Uh, we have not We have not made any. I think this was just a new... He just arrived. I understand. In that case, given our close relationship and Australia's uh, always being a, an absolute stalwart defender of democracy and American interests in Asia... Uh, we would be happy to to come to sort sort of arrangement. We did see that you've been investing more in American markets recently, which is a good sign yes. of continued prosperity between our two nations. Uh, perhaps a, a, a joint economic and military deal could be could be apportioned here today. Do you have the support of your country in Congress to to do something like that? Of course, uh, we see that uh, your nation already guarantees our independence, which we greatly of appreciate course. with uh, the rising tensions in uh, in Asia. Um, so, I mean, of course, yes, we'd love to keep that. Uh, it's more of just uh, we want to be more self-sufficient in defending our own homeland ourselves, which not to say we don't want your support, of course we do, but just having the the sense of peace in the minds of our people is huge for us. Perhaps uh, an arrangement could come to I mean, our, our military has already cooperate heavily. Uh, there right. are many designs that we, we definitely do not allow anyone but our closest of allies to maintain and the sale of certain things. Now, for example, our, our most modern equipment, like aircraft and things like that, we, we would not be willing to even put on the table uh, for licensing, but selling it could be an option out of RP. If you want to license it and we could RP that you basically bought them, we could do that or something. But um, back in RP. Uh, but many of our licenses are absolutely on the table. Now, if your country can commit to mind that you will continue to prioritize economic uh, relationships with the United States and military cooperation and security in Asia above all else, I see no reason that we can't more or less give you a blank check when it comes to military licensing from the U.S. technology and military uh, assets, besides our most modern and, and need-to-know designs, of course. Of course. Um, awesome. That That is great news to hear. Uh, as of right now, I'm not sure if you are aware. We just have a stockpile of F-18s. They're super hornets, however. Yeah. We need we need more. So it's what I'm saying just for. I understand. There uh, at this time I get this is 2000, so I'm going to get mixed on an aircraft. How modern are those? F8. Those are pretty decent. Um, the B2 is around. F22 would be around in like 10 years or like okay, five so years. Okay, so that's before that. So that's really cutting oh, yeah, edge. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so what we could do is, is we could go ahead and, and allow you, you'd have to purchase them. I mean, even though we want to cooperate with you, we, we're not going to manufacture these incredibly expensive aircraft and give them to you for free. At least not now. If, if things get different in Asia, more tensions than things, I'm sure my predecessors will reevaluate that. Uh, if you would be willing to pay for them, uh, we, we could be willing to sell you quite a lot. Out of RP, if you want to license and just pay the license civ cost, you can do it that way. Are you cool with that? Yeah, that's fine. Are, am cool. I able to, so like out of RP, am I able to like just the... The, I forget what it's called, the weapons market. You can use that, yeah. Uh, players will probably just be using that regardless, uh, but. Okay. Yeah, you, you should um... you should be able to. Okay, so do, do you have any problems with that? Like, nope. Over... That's, okay. Just buying them that way. Uh, if you want to buy them, you can do that. Uh, the other thing I would say is also, um, you can just license them directly and produce them that way. As long as like you RP that and write a post saying that you're buying them, we're completely fine with that. Okay, um, and then back in RP, uh, due to our location and close proximity to China, we, in the event that they have a strike, we'd like to have some sort of penetration or, or bombing capabilities, which the B2 is amazing at doing exactly that, and it would fill the role of exactly what we need to do, and we're asking to uh, place an order to purchase some Boro capabilities. Although we... Don't like the movement towards such a thing. We understand your security concerns. Um, we would be willing to sell you a, a limited number to start off with. We, we value your military security in the Pacific and wish to work incredibly closely with you. 
but we would, I would remind you myself that I've always tried to take more of a diplomatic outlook as president. And, and I understand that your country is beginning to become a bit afraid. We also are worried about the Maoism that we've seen rising up in China, as well as the actions of Zuganov in Russia. But diplomacy should always be your first curse of action. Of that course. being said, as, uh, as one of our presidents once said, speak softly and carry a big stick. And if we can uh, give yeah, you Teddy the big Roosevelt. beat suit stick, we're happy. We're, we'd be willing to do that. Yes. And of course, uh, I'm sure as you guys know, when you have a large military, diplomacy is that much easier. People are more uh, more enticed to listen to what you say. That is absolutely so, the of, case. Of In course, that case, uh, we could agree to that. But that we would ask that you not make public and cleat behind closed doors. If you wish to course. publicly speak about uh, the, the fighter uh, purchases, that's fine. But the B2s, please do keep those uh, private. And what do you think is a fair number for us to purchase? Uh, I'd say maybe, maybe 15 to start off with. We can expand them in the future. But as we both know, those are very capable crafts. Yes, and even a few of them are... Are dramatic. Yes. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, thank you. you. We look and, forward to future cooperation, and I, I'm sure my predecessor will, will maintain, if if not even go even further, between our, our two peoples. All right. Well, God bless America. Have a nice day, gentlemen. God bless you too, sir. Uh, Gore, we have a moment. How are you feeling? How are you feeling about the election? All right. Fear, fear. Uh, uh, we want to relay some information what we gathered from the Middle East. Ah, uh, yes, uh, Secretary of Defense. What, what what happened with your talks in the Middle East? Well, not a single nation that we talked that is significant for us to talk wants uh, bad relations with America. Uh, that is uh, that is the good news. Uh, other news: uh, L uh, Lebanese government wants. Uh, uh, investment from the usa uh currently what what we understood is that the uh, economic crisis is coming uh, if no if they do not get support they also require some military aid uh, by military aid i mean weapons they do not the issue the issue there though is that lebanon although we've had complicated relationships with in the past they they are currently heavily influenced by by the Syrian government which we do not support period mm -hmm. I hope you did you make any promises uh, I did not make any promises that's good to hear um, we need to seriously reevaluate our situation with Syria and frankly we're we're going to be in office for not much longer, and I don't think a last-minute deal would, would do anything to help uh, Gore Gore's uh, chances here. So, I'd say at this time we should wait on this. I think a minor economic stimulus into their country, perhaps we could be agreeable to that, but uh, we, we do have to be careful here. We believe that a minor, at least minor investment into Lebanese government would be would be a good action, course of action. Uh, to improve their relations. We know that the current government might not be preferable to USA, but this might ease the tensions. And in we the can't future... do it directly with our government. That's simply off the table. However, there there are many uh, wealthy investors and individuals in Lebanon who are not friendly with the Syrian government who we could potentially do a deal like this. Uh, there... Um, there are... What we would say is if you wish to speak with the president of Lebanon again is that we would be willing to do like one small investment of one civilian industry in Lebanon, but it would need to be publicly known to be a deal between one of our multinational corporations and one of theirs. We cannot support their government publicly. But if they'd be agreeable, we could do that. Understood. All right. More news. Uh, Saudi Arabia agreed to more oil deals between us. They recently built more oil... Re uh, posts, I think, refineries. I'm not mm -hmm. sure. I didn't get it, uh, but they're willing to cooperate further on that matter. I believe that we already. Good... Sorry. Yeah, yeah, that is good to hear. We already do have a standing oil deal with them, but if we can just secure that, will the oil trade between them? They want to. Uh, I asked if they want to, if we could expand it, and they agreed on it. So mm -hmm. that's good that to hear. Well. Did that come with any uh, any any terms or any no, added additions? No. 
Also, one other thing before we continue, I do need to bring this up. I had I had a report on my desk a couple days ago where uh, portions of the FBI and CIA had been asking for more intelligence funding. There had been a few unrelated small reports regarding the potential of some sort of odd odd activity in a couple regions of the Middle East and, and here at home in America. And they're asking for a radical increase to funding. I don't really think it's a good idea, but I thought I'd bring that up, especially given uh, Gore, you might be the next president and the Secretary of Defense should be definitely involved with this and we did have a request for a dramatic increase in intelligence spending it, it it's not too significant but i'm sure it wouldn't work too well with the voters i mean the cia has been really pushing this we Hello. are about to leave office though one moment one Hello. moment this is a private talk oh, okay. oh, sorry um, um gore, gore what's your opinion on this i don't think we should give them that much funding we're worried that they might do something that a, another country might not like and that will be pretty hard to that's explain. a great um they didn't tell me what this was for, and you know how they are. They, I mean, God damn it, they caused so many problems during this presidency. Well, we, yes, uh, I've received a OAS vote to reinstate Cuba into the OAS. Um, we made it clear to Mexico we're not going to approve of that. Yes, uh, I'm not approved. Um, yeah, all right, very well. Uh, um, right. I think that is it. I will be spending the final days uh, campaigning in the more close regions. I'll be primarily focusing on Florida, as uh, Florida has shown to be a very 50-50 vote, and uh, getting Florida's electoral votes will be very important. Of course, it absolutely will be. Well, uh, well, Corey, it's 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 been a pleasure serving with you. Uh, you you've been an, an impressive figure, and and I hope the American voters understand the job you can do for them going forward. And uh, if I can do any more campaigning for you, I'm happy to. I've got some time. I can go give some speeches too around the U.S. a little bit as well, if you'd like. Try to show um, up some support. What is your um, approval ratings, if I may ask? Um, of course, you I don't. Tr I, after, after the situation that we don't need to talk about, they haven't been too great. Ironically, they've gone up with with Republicans, but Democrats. Well, I stopped looking mm -hmm. at them a while back. Um, not yeah. too great. Maybe it would be better if I don't campaign for you then. Maybe I think not. It's a bit too risky. I understand. I, I won't take it personally. Uh, again, uh, this was all just a misunderstanding. I hope the American voters understand that, but uh, what is, what is? All right, um, it's very close to the end. Um, but yeah, Florida is a uh, major concern. If uh, we lose Florida, that could be the election. Agreed. Best of luck out there. Yes, it's uh, the polls have quite closed in, though. We have gained a couple points with the NAFTA uh, signing, as well as uh, those uh, deals with China you, you have made. Hopefully that will be enough. We'll see. Yes, hopefully. All right, now we wait. I think you, you get an event for it. I did this before, right? Uh, I haven't played the US in a while. Yeah, I think you do get an event, though. Uh, does Cypress belong to my influence zone? Yeah, that does, doesn't it? Out of RP, uh, Hastings says he may not make the game, and he's playing India. Moose, at the halftime, are you willing to sit on India, still RP as VP, but just basically, like, not let his economy go to shit? Um, hey. yeah, I, I could try. I mean, I'm not, I haven't played MD in a while, so I don't just know what I'm doing. literally set the construction queues and do his, like, his basic focuses. That's all it is. So, he, you know the AI. You know how it is. Okay. okay. Yeah. I think we're right. gonna have we're gonna have Mexico uh, coming in. Um, he's requesting to speak without regarding the um. Sure. Yeah, let's bring him in. This will probably be our last talk before before the election. Mm -hmm. Right, we'll be going off then. Are you, can you go speak to Lebanon about what we talked about? Uh, yes, that is what I'm was about to do. Wonderful. I'll speak with you soon. Welcome. Is this an ambassador uh, or the president? First off, this is the president. We are in the meeting in Cara um, in Bogota here. Uh, with uh, all the members who, who asked. Should have stated that. <clears throat> President Clinton? Sorry? Um, Your mic's I a little low, man. I have you on max. Uh, my volume is too high? No, it's too low. Like, I have you on max and I can still barely hear you. Oh, uh, can, can you hear me better now? <laughs> yes, I can. That's perfect. <laughs> Let me turn it down. <laughs> That'll work. Yeah, it, you know, it's it's my my microphone. It's not very good. Like I play in other server, it's the same matter. So, I gotcha. <clears throat> um, 
I, I, we understand that you're opposed to this, but we believe, for example, that a compensation to reparations for the damage the Cuban government did in the 1960s to the Cuban population that now lives in Florida, the, the business owners of the past, who will be very beneficial, in fact, to the Democratic Party in the elections. This is just a suggestion, of course, for a condition that... As, as I said, especially given it's a voting season, the people of Florida feel very strongly about the actions of Cuba, that we have a large, sizable Cuban population there, of which are not fans of Cuba. The election, let alone the, the moral issues to, to begin with, with having any form of recommendation uh cooperation with cuba is just off the table i understand you are doing this for good reasons you want obviously the, the people of latin america to prosper and i respect you for that of course uh president zadillo but the america has a very firm policy against cuba and my administration will not change that certainly not days before an election i understand i understand we just believe that um, the reparations for the damage could help you gain the vote of the Floridan population. Uh, but if that is the matter, then we, I mean, we seem to understand. I don't think the American people would see it that way. And already, uh, it's 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 not looking then, good. We have stunned so much to close the gap in the uh, in the polls. We don't want to jeopardize it last second. No, we're, it's right. going to come down to the line here. Very well done. Very well done. Then you you are certainly free to vote against and. Um, we understand that it is, as, as we stated, even if Cuba is reinstated, this does not change anything for Cuban-American relations. This is I'll, not the European Union. This is just telling you, that this election is extremely close. Extremely, extremely close. It is down to the wire. We can we can hold the vote until after the election, if it's necessary. That might be a good idea. If we have if we have Gore in power, that's a conversation we could certainly have. Uh, as you know, Vice President Gore is a, is, a, is a man who views diplomacy above all else, and we might be willing to reconsider some of our platforms there but if it's if it's george w i don't i don't think there's any hope of that yeah, well, we will filibuster this uh, this agreement until after the election and then we very well we're waiting for that event i think a fire is in january right i know it doesn't yeah, have a good time yeah. uh this is gone down to the wire it show it seems that florida might be the ultimate deciding factor here it does look like that um uh, we've got we've got we've got the it's it's really getting complicated here it looks like you may be losing it's so close it's it's hundreds of votes oh god <laughs> it's our it, new stations they're calling it differently it's i think it's, it's up to the i advise you don't concede here i advise uh, you don't I concede I'll, I'll i did concede earlier but now that it's been closer i think i'll take back my I'll take it back, and we'll we'll try to fight this. We uh, have we have like reports that uh, Bush is declaring his uh, b declaring victory. Outrageous! How could he do that? It's, it's, I don't know. We need, we need a we need a recount is what we need here. This is this oh. is not democratic. We need, we, we need to petition the, the Florida. We need to ask the Florida Supreme Court to have a recount here. I think I agree. Uh, we we need to. We uh, I advise your campaign sue immediately, and you need to make a press conference saying you are not conceding. Yes. And we're not conceding. It is a matter of. Only hundreds of votes. This this cannot be cannot be disclosed. There's no way. Well, gentlemen, I leave you to your your current moment. Thank, Thank you. you. We'll speak time. soon. Yeah. Goodbye. We'll speak soon. I can't believe this. I want to, this to is relay the... something. Uh, well, uh, the uh, Lebanon said that they are not like in RP. They are not uh, puppets of Syria. Because they cannot make themselves not puppets. It's oh, okay, so the they're game. they're acting independently in their Western outlook then. Yep. In that case, that uh, we would we would offer them the same deal before, so we could even double that, so we could give them uh, two factories. They, but it would they be... asked for uh, office, like office sector. They are running out of money, so that's the corporations. Problem. Yeah, we could do that. That's reasonable. Let's go ahead and push that through. So we're still we're uh, still in power for many... now. I I think we lost. Uh, they did a recount and the, the the gap closed by a couple hundred votes, but we're still a couple hundred off. And I think they're going to certify the election in Florida. This is a bad business. You know, it's his brother who's governor down there. Ugh, I, I can't believe this. Hey, Mr. Bush. This does, this, this does not seem right. Are you, are you <laughs> going to concede again? I think we have to concede. It's they're, they're, uh, the Supreme Court aren't taking any more cases. Very well. It is. Well, it's been it's been an honor serving with you. We have a little bit more time, but uh, at the end of the day, there's not much more we can do here. Very well. 
George Bush has a Thankfully, we planned for this. Uh, I just wanted to congratulate Mr. George W. Bush on his election victory. <sighs> yeah, Alright. Well, it's, it's, uh, this is still Clinton. He'll he'll be in office in, in January. I'll wait till January 20th, I believe, right? Yeah, he's, okay, not, he's not inaugurated yet. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I can, start, I can start RPing as Bush though, he's not in power. I gotta, hold on, I gotta give myself the mindset. Gotta, gotta start thinking about fried chicken here. One second. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, get ready for this god-awful accent. Alright. Will Cheney! That was a tough one, I'm gonna be honest with you. Yeah, Some goddamn sure liberals in Florida, they almost, they almost beat us. Uh, sure was close. They did, they did close the gap in those final couple months, but uh, thankfully, by a couple hundred votes, uh, we did we, uh, thankfully, thankfully, the Supreme Court was in our favor. At the end of we it. gave him, we gave him a good run for the money. Uh, can you imagine if if the Republican Party had had chose that their John McCain? I mean, can you imagine he would have gotten his ass beat uh, so that, badly? That would not have been close. Thankfully, we also uh, safe majority in the uh, House of Representatives, and I will uh, do have a 50-50 vote in the Senate. But of course, I will be voting in favor of our. Well, we, we got you there, Cheney. I'm full of confident yeah. in your ability to to ensure our platform gets passed. Here, of here. Course, course. Congratulations, I our, our, Bush. Uh, I assume our deal still stands, Cheney. Regarding, I mean, I, I don't, I don't want to spend all my my time dealing with these 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 Middle Eastern politics and all that kind of kind of kind of garbage. You're you're gonna handle that for me, right? Yes, of course. I, I'll make the deals. You have no need to worry or check at all. I will make the deals, and uh, you can uh, good spend your time. I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad to hear that. Indeed, this is this is gonna be a great new. American century for us, and I think we're the Republican Party, and me and you uh, in the White House, we're looking for a truly, truly spectacular time. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, until inauguration, I think we should start to make some phone calls, maybe? Yes, of course. We should start um, speaking to some nations as President-elect and Vice President-elect. Uh, we do now uh, carry the uh, America forward. Goddamn right. Goddamn right. Very well. Uh, I believe we have some people here. We have uh, Spain. Like I got a got a phone call. Is this uh, is this the uh, who is this speaking? Uh, this is Jose Maria Anzar of Spain. I've come ah, to congratulate President you. President Aznar, it's it's a pleasure to speak with you. I'm I'm still out here in Texas. We we won. People of America saw fit to put us in power. It's an honor to be here. But um, what well, what what's your call about? I have come to congratulate you on your victory over the lips. Uh, thank you, Carolyn. It was the voters of America who who made the right decision. I will look forward to uh, to cooperating with uh, with you out there with your country out there in Europe. I'm sure that we can uh, we we can continue our ties. Was was that all you were calling about? I was also calling about um, discussing on what matters NATO is going to take moving into the 21st century and possible economic deals with the United States and Spain. We uh we we will stand firmly behind our NATO allies in Europe. Um, I think that it is pinnacle that we ensure that these. I mean, I heard that the communists are getting power back in Russia. Uh, Zukanov, I think his name was something like that. You know, I spoke a lot about him in the campaign. The voters of America, they they firmly believe, as I do, that we cannot allow any forms of communism, leftism, or anything in Europe, in America, anywhere else. And and I hope Spain, you are uh, President Aznar, you are committed to that too. Yes, of course. Communism is a plague on goddamn right democratic nations of the world. We well, Spain is committed to, to fighting against this, working with our NATO allies and stuff. I'm sure uh, continued cooperation between our two countries is very doable. Uh, economically speaking, uh, I, I, we could we could work something out. But I I want to assure you that if that deal does not present an opportunity to my my constituents, the American people, the American voters, I, I can't accept any sort of a deal with you. And you know I. I'd have you speak with Cheney too, as again, I, he'll handle most of that kind of stuff. But I think we can work something out. All right, great news. Thank you for your time. You as well. We need to speak, Kamu. Yeah, what's it's, up? It's urgent. If you want to uh, pause your stream. Sure. Where's my audio?
All right, sorry about that. We had some people fucking with uh, the server and DDoSing and trying to crash the game. That's what apparently all that stuff was, so I had to pass out some bands. Um, okay, back in the game. Gotta get my accent going again. I want to talk with South Korea because we got to mend that fence. Yes, um, I just went to Turkey and we just reaffirmed um, some deals just to... Good. Uh, we, uh, we are with them. All right, also, we... you're still playing in Discord, by the way. Probably yes, you're right. Let me change that real quick. Very well, this also Cuba thing. I've seen this. I'm not quite sure if we should vote in favor of it. I don't really trust a, a communist government oh. in uh, Cuba. The goddamn Cubans. Uh, we're, we're, listen, we know well what their government does. They still got the same leadership they've done in the past. We are not changing our policy on Cuba. We will give no conciliation, and we will give no options to them, period. I'm sure you agree, Cheney. Yes, of course, with a potential Soviet Union reoccurring, we, we cannot have any sort of reconciliation with Cuba. I can't believe the no. previous administration even conceived of that. No wonder why they lost. Well, Clinton was a weak man. Uh, we know what he was. I mean, his, his actions were unacceptable, and he damaged America to the core. We will not continue those dangerous choices. Period. Of course, of course. Mr. Clinton, what, can we talk? I, I apologize. You are speaking with... I'm changing my name right now. One second. George... W. Bush. Oh, Mr. Bush, welcome. What can I do for you? Uh, we are a Switzerland. We can invest you and you can invest us. We, was, uh, we want to cooperation with you. You want to work out an economic deal? Uh, Cheney, do you mind handling this? Uh, again, I yes. need do, do economic. I this. Shit. And, All right, I'm going to call the Korea. And we, we, was, we was going to ask for your uh, satellites. Can we take it? Satellite yeah. networks. All of them? Pardon? I did not hear what you said. Can we use your uh, satellites? Your satellites? Uh, are our, 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 our military satellites? You, you, we don't have that kind of a working relationship with the Swiss people. Uh, yes, uh, no, 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 no military. Uh, civil... Oh, this is a... This is, uh... This is uh, the, the president-elect George W. Bush calling the uh, president of South Korea. Uh, yes, this is a representative of Kim Dae-young, as well as Mr. Pyongyuk comes, and he brings a gift as you uh, expressed interest in fried chicken with ah. our last meeting. He has brought you Korean fried chicken. Korean fried chicken. I didn't know you had that out there. I'm surprised. Um, yes, it's one of the things that uh, uh, byproduct of the full legal plan. That is, that is absolutely fantastic. Any chance to eat chicken, you know, uh, my wife, she wouldn't like that, but, well, she's not here right now, is she? Um, I'd like to start off by expressing my sincere apologies for the words of Quinn. I was, I was made aware that some unsavory things were said between, uh, him and you, and I'd just like to say that does not represent the words of my administration, and, and his, and his actions there are not indicative of what I plan to do as president, so I'd like to apologize for that. Of course, uh, we, we understand that uh, the the Clintons believe they had uh, more power over uh, the world than what they truly did. Uh, respectfully, of course, we believe that uh, the United States is a great, uh, powerful nation and the leader of the free world. Uh, but uh, it was very confusing to the representative sent as uh, he had no clue who Clinton was at the time. I understand. It was it was a it was a it was a political uh, miscombobulation. Uh, and, and it's one I don't intend to repeat in this administration now that uh, I will be sworn in very shortly. Uh, I hope that all the ties and deals we talk about uh, not too long back, a couple months ago, a year now, I'd say or so. It was early in the campaign. Man, been a long time. Feels like a while. Uh, yes. All, all those the, deals stand. Yes. The permits uh, for the building of the factories uh, within the Midwest in California have uh, already been sent in. Uh, they're waiting for approval. And then they will start in the creation of jobs. If uh, they're approved expediently, they should be done within uh, the next three years. That's good to hear. That's damn fine to hear. I'm glad to hear that. We're, we're uh, continuing economic cooperation between our countries. It is critical. Now, listen, we got to ensure that any influence of, the, of these of these extreme Maoists in China and, and these radical communists in Russia are not allowed. And I think ensuring that South Korea is, is autonomous and strong is absolutely key in Asia. I, I, I do got to ask, uh, what, what, what are your plans to, to deal with those developing situations over there? I'm very uh, worried to myself. Regarding Zuganov, um, he has not made any uh, grandiose uh, 
attempts to speak with any of the administration. Uh, we believe uh, the business that we've already done is done, and there most likely will be very little communication uh, between our two countries. Uh, besides that, uh, the rising Maoist influence in China uh, is quite a, a fear, as it would uh, appear they have a plan to nationalize companies. Uh, we're currently in agreement to uh, prevent most of uh, the South Korean companies from being uh, nationalized by the CCP. Uh, on the North Korean front, uh, we do have uh, much progress as uh, we have uh, restarted communication with uh, Kim Jong-il and he looks towards a denuclearization program and possibly the reunification of Korea. Uh-huh. Well, and that's it good would to hear. that the Chinese don't oppose this either, so we would be removing one communist government from uh, the world stage. That's damn fun to hear. Um, in that regard, I'm glad to hear that you're not going to be cooperating with these, with these communists in Russia. That's that's real dangerous. I don't want to see the Cold War come back, anything like that. America's prospered under our current circumstances, and that would just be a danger. Um, if you if you do have avenues to work with that Kim Jong, Kim Jong, what's his name? Kim Jong Il. Kim Jong Il, that's the one. That 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 fellow out there, that'd be real good. Uh, any chance we have to to stop armed conflict in Korea again? That's uh, that's a that's a primary interest of my government. I'm glad to hear you're doing the same. Uh, I, we... I am very happy that you did get in when you did because it would appear uh that uh, there seems to be a financial crisis hitting uh, Asia at the time, as it would appear that uh, most of our GDP numbers were fluffed. Now the Asian crisis? Uh, do you know what happened to Out of Game? I do. Out of, out of character, yes, but Bush would not be... Okay, uh, yes, it, but, it yeah. would appear that with uh, the quote-unquote acceptable amounts of corruptions has uh, devastated Asia as the new filings have gone through and most countries are not as prosperous as they once thought. That is... But, that is not good to hear. Uh, what, what actions is your government taking on that? Uh, currently, uh, believe it or not, the Korean investments around the world uh, are the only thing that is uh, keeping Korean uh, government open for business at this point. Um, uh, we're, we're taking some austerity measures regarding our uh, health care, which is uh, truly unfortunate. Uh, we hoped that uh, in the new millennia that we would... Uh, make south korea a capitalist utopia but uh -huh. it would appear that those dreams are further out than we uh, originally intended we can we can inject a bit of capital and if you'd like we, we our economy is doing pretty good i'm not gonna just throw away money no offense to me but uh if, if you'd like to if you'd like to receive a small amount of uh american economic stimulus we could provide you with that um i believe the best way to justify this to both of our voters would be uh as well on a diplomatic front is if uh the way that your administration worded it as a payment for the bases in south korea then it would no longer be a uh, I, don't, I don't know bailout. about that we'll, we'll have to flush these numbers out if you'd like to speak with dick cheney on the particulars he handles these sort of more uh military based economic matters uh, if you'd like to have a talk with him i'd appreciate that of course wonderful i'm sure you can work it out with him i trust him completely he'll handle that with you Splendid. It was a pleasure meeting you, Bush. I hope you enjoy the uh, Korean fried chicken. You as well. I'm, I'm going to tuck into this in just a moment here. Thank you. All right. Have a good day, sir. You too. Oh, welcome. Well, well, welcome. President Bush is your friend, President Cardoza. Thank you for the gracious invitation to your capital. President, President Cardoza, well, welcome to the White House. Welcome to Washington, D.C. I hope you had a had a good flight here. Uh, it was quite quite relaxing, I must add. Your territories of Puerto Rico are a gracious host, I must add. Most certainly. It, it is good to be speaking with you, President Cardoza. I know you had a good working relationship with President Clinton, and I hope that we can continue that as Brazil is uh, a very powerful, prominent nation in, in, in the Americas, and we have had a, a good relationship in the past. Of course, your government and you yourself value that strength, and we appreciate it. Now, unfortunately, Brazil has gone on some hard times. We've had a bit of a depression, but I assure you that the economy is strong and the market has been investing into your allies in Italy and Germany as well. That's good to hear. 
Prison Cardoza, uh, is, this is a meeting that obviously is not public. As such, I'd like to have a very serious conversation with you and have your opinion given fully. Uh, what are your thoughts regarding the situation we're seeing with your fellow BRICS member? Uh, BRIC member, I apologize. Uh, in China and Russia, it, it seems very dangerous to us. Uh, well, while we don't have the organization of BRICS just yet... The BRIC, I, I apologize, is what I said. Um... Uh... Counterparts in China have only been on a very mutual basis. I think that their investments into a rubber industry has been quite small, and we plan to keep it that way. When it comes to Russia, the election seems to be a bit fraudulent. Uh, recent sources within our intelligence agencies have linked several key aspects of the election that have been fraudulent and or under coercion. I believe so. Uh -huh. I do not believe Russia is a good partner in the future. Agreed. Out of RP, okay, so Brick wasn't informed yet. Was it, there was a precursor organization though at the start? I know there was. What was that called? Uh, I'm not too privy to that, but I can look it up for you right now. I'm trying to look it up and just don't see anything. Um, I might also have that wrong. Make sure I'm not completely wrong here. No, it didn't exist at all until 2003. It was just all the countries were closely aligned, so I was wrong on that. Anyway, uh, yeah, we, we, we find these fraudulent elections to be very worrying. I, I, I have received a port from the, the chiefs of staff that, that make it quite clear that there is no way Zukanov had the support of Russia going into that election. How he managed to, 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 to cheat that election with Putin in power, I do not know. But we, we view that government F at best uh, form in poor circumstances at worst as entirely illegitimate. Uh, is, is Brazil planning any any specific outlooks publicly regarding them, or will it be business as usual? Well, at the moment, it's mostly business as usual. We need to make sure that investors within the Brazilian economy are reassured that their political and business ties aren't cut off. But secretly, I think we can both agree that Russia will be cut out of any major deals in the future. That's good to hear. We, we see things pretty similarly in that we got to be... Uh... We do got to be really careful with, with such dangerous countries. Oh, it's war's over. It's about to send new equipment. Uh, well, I, speaking of equipment uh, and strength, I, I know that many of our design companies have already switched over to the reliable American designs, but if we could purchase those designs outright, I think that would be better for both your economy and my military, of course. We are not going to give you, obviously, a permanent lease on any of our military designs. Uh, that That is simply not on the table. However, we, we are open to, obviously, giving you extended periods of licensing on certain uh, and purchasing of certain military equipment as we cooperate heavily. But just to clarify, there is no situation where we will simply hand those over uh, permanently to you. I see. I, I wouldn't want that without a fair trade deal for your, for your government. I wouldn't want that for you. Oh, but certainly. in the short term... I think uh, if we could buy just at least a couple of multiple fighters just to make sure that the Brazilian and the South American sphere is secure and occupied, that would be of great interest to your government. We'd be agreeable to that. Um, we'd be very agreeable to that. Now, I would also like to see if you would be open. Uh, I've had a few calls from some of, some of the vice president's friends who are interested in pursuing uh, options in Brazil economically, as you are a very... Good market for labor, uh, uh, if you understand my drift. Would you be opposed to us building a little bit of manufacturing, as there are many who are beginning to sweat here in the U.S. regarding the danger of manufacturing investments in Asia in places like China? I see. Well, if it is labor that you require, I think you can find vast quantities, not only in Rio de Janeiro, but within the Amazons as well. And we would be open to allowing American companies such as General Motors and this new company as Amazon, I think would be of great value to our economy. Oh, I, I, think I, I think I read something about that. I don't know them too well, but um, yeah, we, we would, we'd be thinking of maybe put a 60 billion into Sao Paulo region in terms of uh, manufacturing and uh, uh, an investment in some corporate offices in Rio de Janeiro. Would this be an option for you? Uh, that'd be great. I do advise we are building the infrastructure back up in our friends in Espirito Santo, but uh, Sao Paulo is a great, great Where's that place. again? Espirito Santo? Uh, yeah, it's right next to it. It's, uh, Vitoria. Hmm. Um, let me take a look. Let me take a look around here. I don't RP. Which one is it? 
to the right of Rio de Janeiro, there's uh, Vitoria. Oh, for the right of Rio. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's good. We'll do that. Wonderful. Well, we're, we're glad to find uh, foreign markets for such things. Now, I do want to bring a lot of jobs back to the United States uh, to make that clear, but we obviously will always need uh, foreign investments. And I think given the danger we're seeing from some countries, continuing cooperation between Brazil and the United States would be would be key. Don't you don't you agree, Prison Cardoza? I think that this is a great offer and that the two countries moving forward will be stronger than ever. And I appreciate that. Fully agreed. Fully agreed. Well, uh, anything else you'd like to speak with while in Washington? I just want to obviously make it clear that our commitment towards working with you is 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 never higher, and uh, and I think we we should continue to be good partners in, in American politics, but and elsewhere too. Well, there's there's one thing I'd like to bring to your attention. I know that uh, many within South America concerned about the drug war and the continued rise of the cartels and we're wondering if you're able to send some of your dea agents to help assist not only me but uh mexico as well in these endeavors yeah one second um this is host by the way yeah i know there's someone's been ddosing our games oh yeah, yeah. it's the uh, abkhazia guy funny yeah, character it's that's what i was about to talk to you about they're they're trying to raid our server Oh, I see that. Did anybody else just crash? And yeah, we're getting DDoS. There's a group of players fucking with the yep. game. Oh, yep. that's always fun. Mm hmm Yep. All right, I just banned their alts again. Uh, are any of the new ones? I think we're good. I, I've been timing them out also. I, I they're completely banned. I thought I did that before, but they're all banned now. They're um, making new accounts. That's the I know. Issue. I can see that. I can, I, I can hit the raid button, but it's not a full raid technically. If it, I mean, if it happens continuously, then we might need to. That's yeah, true. What's the raid bot? What's a raid bot mean? The Discord has a feature for when you're getting raided. We can contact Discord about. Oh, it's not technically that? a raid. It's just a group of. There's a. Oh, I, there's not a lot of them. They just mainly are DDoSing the server. Right. Who are I don't they? know if they have more alts in the server that we don't know. That's the problem. Well, Adriano, I know, isn't he one of them? Because he's I know banned Adriano now. Was... Yeah, I hit most well, of those guys. There's another one that's currently joined in. Yeah, Adriana32. Is he one of them as well? Uh, what? I, I mean, maybe. So. What do you mean? I don't. I don't think he. I don't think. No, I, I, don't, I don't think that's right now. Um, yeah, the, main, the main group are all banned now. Uh, let's try the Rios again and see what happens. I mean. Right. I don't know. Adriana sounds like the problem. Almost. There's people that joined the game the purposely. <laughs> Yes. Adriano is a troll, but he's not. Uh, he doesn't cheat and stuff. Like yeah, that. it's just something different. I, I don't think Adriano's. Part okay. Of the well, the issue we need yeah, to care about is the people DDoSing. Let's let's do the rehost right now. Let's see what uh, if we can get it back up and stuff. Because they are not in the server. Are people DDoSing. The ones we know. Yeah, there's a group of them. All right. There's um. There's someone impersonating Jacob in detail now. Let me see. What's his no, name? No, no, he got banned. He uh, got banned. He, he got, got banned? banned. Don't mention. He got banned already. Like his account did by who? Uh, are we talking about the one on organization of Islamic cooperation? I don't think no. we're. No, we're talking about in this Discord. Okay. No, the, so Jacob, the Jacob in the SCR right, right now is the legitimate one. Is there a different one? So there's one with the the number zero six seven five. What? See, I knew I knew we should have banned Abby a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. Yeah. Well, wait, yeah. Okay. So that that you are right. That is that is an all. I'm banning that one. I mean, the thing is, we gotta we gotta have a good reason to ban people, and we have the one, so we can clean house here again. So it's good. Looks like it's gonna fuck with the game, though. Oh my god! The IDSP yes. wins the 2001 Indonesian election. Yeah. And I have one of Abby's. Uh, I have one of Abby's friends saying that somebody made a make uh, made a fake what? count of him. What station? Okay. Uh, it's Swamp it German. A AK it's Swamp uh, German. No, he he was trying to crash again. <laughs> yeah. Yep. He said he got banned for no reason and all that. He's me. No, yeah. he got if you banned wanna, for. If you want to just block him, go ahead. Nah, yeah. I'll just leave him. I ignored him. Who? Also, who's player? <laughs> player is dangerous. Player? Uh, you you have a password on this game now, right? Uh, me to put one, I yeah, because they have the, they all have they all they need is the mods and they can refresh and get the same version. 
Yep. Uh, sure. So go ahead. Yep. So yeah, we yeah. we need a password let on. Throw, Absolutely. Let me throw a password on now on this one. I didn't think about that, but you're. <laughs> I say password. I think players can go. And don't don't say that. Don't yeah, say players. the password on stream either. Oh, I won't. I won't. This is yeah, players can go. I mean, it's gonna be easy for them to get it again. It's the only issue if they do a uh, all the accounts. I mean, I'm just gonna. It sucks, but I'm basically gonna have to ban anyone who joins for this game, the server. I can DM them after and let them know what's up. But God. Well? No life children fucking with games is just so fucking stupid. Yeah, it's sad. Oh shit, did I die then? Uh, the pass is on the, the pass is below you on uh, in your uh, messages sniper. So how, how do we get the password now that if we're not allowed to say the password? Where is just, the password? Just put it in. You don't need to say it out loud. You just need to find it when it's in the announcements. Yep. Oh, uh, it's not in yet? Did you uh, ban something called Yours the Alpha? You're, you're the Alpha? I don't believe oh, so. I'm the Alpha. You guys haven't started the game yet, have you? Uh, no, we're rehosting. Who's Lips? Okay, good. Ships. Oh, is it reconnected? Are we hosting again, or? Yeah, someone uh, has been trying to fuck with it. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, crap. Oh, man, let me out. <sighs> yeah. Also went ahead and labeled it as private, that way it doesn't show up. Good. Wait, did, did you start the rehost? I got we're the doing re, We're doing a rehost. Oh. Yeah. yeah, have you rehosted the, the ID? Cause... Right, I'll take a minute. So yeah, someone's been fucking with the game. Also, I apologize for not reading chat. I knew that the US game would be a lot, which is the case. As the US, you gotta do diplomacy 24-7. So I apologize for not talking with folks uh, in chat about that. So somewhat, there's a group of players who got really upset at the server or something like that, or they're trolls, I'm not too sure. Uh, they are currently DDoSing and they're trying to fuck with the game. We haven't had this happen in a while, to be fair. We had this actually semi-common in the early days of the server when we were really small. We haven't had one of these in a long time, so it's nice, I guess. We're hopefully going to be dealing with it. But if it's a DDoS game, there's always a chance we're just going to struggle for the last of it. So be warned, apologize. Nothing I can do. Yeah, Jacob, if you want to get information for us, I mean, like, feel free, because, I mean, there's, what they're doing is illegal, so, there's, there is some things that we can do. Okay. We'll just wait for the ID to go back up, and we're good. I'm going to go ahead and turn off my video screen while I put in the, the info for the game, just because I don't want people screwing with it. One second. Okay. The alts where? In my Twitch chat or in the in the Discord? Yeah, we got a we got a group of children fuck with the game. On Discord we banned I believe most of them. If there are more alts that we are not aware of that are not banned, feel free to DM me and I can ban them. Oh boy. We're not handling this now. Like, in regards to who and who hasn't been banned, uh, you can appeal that. We'll figure it out later. But for now, uh, we will. We are going to clean shop. Yeah, that one, Jacob, the 06751, one, I already banned that. Just double check to make sure I did. No, it is not banned. There's a different one. Okay. Uh, one second. Okay, that one's banned too. Look at a haircut. No, I just I just uh, put my hair up and didn't let it go crazy. 
Yep. As, uh, we had 60 something at the start. It's mid 60 bearded. We didn't beat the record today. I was wondering if we would. The, the record we had in an MD game was 74 players. We didn't beat it today. We got close. I think we had 67 at the start or something. They're still raiding. Uh, we've had no new players in the server for a while, so we're fun. Main dude is Dutch. Okay. Yeah, if you if you want to send me their their information, uh, there's we can we can go ahead and we can do some stuff related to that. If you want to, if you want to let us know their information, we can do some stuff. I know a lot of kids think that you can do this kind of stuff and there's no consequences, but that's not true. Cool. I will reiterate, it's been a while since we've had one of these. It has been a while. Yeah, I control. Uh, you guys go both go get off and get back on. Alright, now you can get back on. Did you, uh, Tom, did you see my, or my message to you? Yep, I can do that. Alright. Oh, do you want to do, do you that right now? The... Yep, go ahead and start it. You were the present for this year. Okay, are we gonna, are we gonna do the, uh, the, what's it called, right? The event? Stage. Yep, okay, I'll go start that. We're about to do a UNSC meeting, by the way. All right, so let's get going. So just a reminder, we're running the UNSC meetings in the stage channel for now. Uh, all the permanent members can come up on the main stage. Just to remind you, UNSC meetings are not uh, arguments. Like, there are, there are speakers. So we have a system where every year there's a certain person who will be the UN president. Uh, a certain one will be the note taker. Uh, hopefully Sniper's going to be a note taker, but he's doing a lot of stuff right now. So as the U.S. is uh, first on the table, we'll be chairing the meeting. If you are a permanent member of the USSC or a rotating member, I'm going to go ahead and link the information into the uh, announcements channel for MD announcements. There are some members uh, who are rotating this year. Let's see if any of them are playable. So the rotating members for this year is going to be Bangladesh, Colombia, uh, Ireland, Jamaica, Mali, Maritanus, Norway, Singapore, Tunisia, uh, Ukraine are all rotating. So if you're those countries, you also get to come up on the stage. You just don't obviously have veto powers. Now, uh, Sniper put out a little thing. I hope you all read that. We are going to run these like proper UNSC meetings. That means that you will wait until your turn to speak. Interruptions just don't happen realistically. Um, so you wait your turn and we'll set the agenda and move forward from there for specific items. If we want to vote, it'll be a formal roll call. Um, so obviously Matt is Russia. Uh, he would be up here. Let me see who else if you're a permanent member of the UNSC go ahead and raise your hand I'll pull you up or if you're a rotating member Just a reminder I will call upon you to speak as a president I will not always be the president certain countries will rotate and be the president So I'm just at this meeting. It won't be the same in the future um, You'll be called upon to speak and you'll have your chance to talk uh, There's no debate format when it comes to UNSC You will have your chance to speak like how we normally used to do the regular uh, UN meetings So you'll have your time to speak and then you'll wait your turn uh, in order to do it again if you want to speak after the person who does, just send me a DM and I will call you up. So we're going to call it to session, the UN Security Council meeting on uh, of 2001. This is a regularly scheduled meeting uh, called in order to speak on global issues. Currently, the chair has no explicitly set agenda. Is there anyone who would like to put anything on the agenda for discussion, voting or anything else? Go ahead and shoot me a DM and I will go ahead and go with that. Is there any of the... Permanent or rotating UNSC members who would like a topic to discuss, potentially vote on. Give it a minute. The United Kingdom uh, uh, would, would like to speak. What What is the agenda item that you are setting to discuss? Yeah, um, we would like to discuss, um, this does concern Ireland, who I don't believe is here, um, but they have expressed our interest 
in sending assistance to them in regards to a rec uh, recent raids on the IRA, and we would like to put forward legislation that would see uh, UN assistance to Ireland in regards to this um, issue, as we see the upholding of the uh, upholding of the Good Friday Agreement of as utmost importance to peace and stability in Europe at this current point in time. What is the explicit uh, policy that you want to put up to a vote and do you wish to speak about it? We'll give the opportunity for anyone else to speak on this issue too uh, in this meeting, but what is the explicit policy that you're putting forward for a so vote? So explicit policy would You'll be... You'll need to have it written um, out. This will need to be written, okay, by the way. Cool. Yeah. Then I can I just give me a second to write that down and then... Go ahead. Just go ahead yeah. and throw in the UN statements and resolutions. Do a new post in there and state what you explicitly want to be voted on. That being All said, right. you've given an outline for it. Do you want to talk about it or do you want to give, to give anyone a chance to respond? Uh... I'll let people give their thoughts down, and then when I get a chance to write some stuff down, I'll... I'll so what's the general them. outline of the policy before you write it, just so, so people the, can talk? The general about? outline is to um, increase um, support in... Um, in Because like, what's been going on is that there's been several... There's been, uh, so far, one major raid uh, stealing Irish military equipment, and so we want to see um, forces that would not provoke nationalist ire among the IRA assisting in defending such locations from IRA raids, um, which is why we're trying to avoid sending a lot of British troops as we feel like that could potentially escalate the situation. So do you, what, what explicitly do you want done then? Uh, if Ireland's okay with it, uh, like some, I guess in game, it would just be like some single, like two, three width divisions just at a couple like- So seasons. you are, are you looking for UN peacekeepers explicitly blue helmets or are you looking for something else? Uh, if, uh, if Ireland's willing to have blue helmets, then it's blue helmets. Um, okay, so the proposal on the table in order to bring, uh, obviously, stability to the region of Ireland, given uh, the, the breaking of some of the protocols made between some of the uh, the organizations that have caused issues to the British government is to uh, deploy a number of UN troops there, obviously, who do not have the ability to engage in direct action, but can keep the peace. Do any permanent or rotating members of the UNSC wish to speak upon this issue in any capacity? Go ahead and DM me and I'll, I'll give you, you can go ahead. If not, we can just immediately put it to a vote as soon as uh, he goes ahead and writes that out. Okay, I'm getting no information, so it appears that none of the rotating or permanent members of the UN Security Council wish to speak upon this issue. Now, Ireland does wish to speak, uh, but given this is a UNSC meeting, they obviously uh, will not be able to speak. Um, are they not a rotating member, as you said before? Were they? Let me look. Two thousand. They are. They are a rotating are. member. You are right. Okay, let me go ahead and raise your hand again, Rose. I'll pull you up here. All right. We are going to hear from the representative of Ireland, a rotating member uh, this cycle. I am well, uh, Ireland here. I'm willing to take any sort of help uh, uh, because my uh, army is underfunded and under-equipped, and we cannot produce that ourselves. So any help to stop the IRA from getting any more any more sort of power in Ireland would be amazing. Very well. Um, so Ireland is explicitly uh, advocating for it. Uh, do we go ahead? Have we had that written out yet? Not a kingdom. I am uh, like two sentences from done. Okay, well, let's wait for that. And then we'll, we'll put it to a vote, assuming no one else wishes to speak. This is one last chance. Does anyone else want to speak on this policy uh, proposal before we put it to a vote? As a reminder, any of the permanent members of the UNSC can veto it. Uh, everyone else will, will do a vote. Norway is a rotating member. Let's call you up here. Hello? Hello? All right, we're just waiting for that. Are you, are you almost done? Uh, while, while he Most finishes that off, let's go ahead and take a moment. Uh, currently... Up. We'll take, we'll put that on hold for a minute though. France currently wishes to make a proposal, same thing as uh, as him. Any proposal you want to make, go ahead and write that out in the UN statements and resolutions. But would you like to speak about what you are proposing for a resolution, uh, representative from France? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, France likes to propose the following, which is also been, I believe, I, I typed it out uh, this morning. Um, we're proposing uh, on the issue about Israel and Palestine, we're proposing the following things. Uh, well, I can just read it out what it's said. The Palestinian question is something that has uh, fueled decade-long violence 
uh, human rights violations and misery for the people of both Israel and Palestine. France supports a two-state solution and therefore supports the proposals of Libya and Turkey. Uh, though we like to propose a different approach in this matter. It is imperative that both nations shall exercise their right to be sovereign states, uh, which each on respecting each other's territorial integrity. France has drafted the following proposal that will be shared with the international community uh, right now. Borders based on the 4th June of 1967 lines with agreed equivalent land swaps. Uh, second, uh, sec uh, security arrangements preserving the sovereignty of the future Palestinian state and guaranteeing the security of Israel. Third, a fair, equitable and ne negotiated solution to the refugee problem. And fourth, an arrangement making Jerusalem the capital of both states. Uh, that is our proposal. Would anyone else uh, want to speak? The United States would like to speak, but I will wait before anyone else would like to first. I believe that this is more of a General Assembly matter than a United Nations Security Council. The Security Council uh, convenes over subjects like uh, enforcement of, uh, of policies, not, uh, not um, enforcement the, the of UNS, uh, the diplomatic UNSC decisions. The is capable of writing out like letters of like uh, basically support, so although no policy would take formal effect, uh, if they propose this, the UNSC could vote to, to, to pen a uh, basically statement saying that they support this. It would not go into any any form of legal law, but the UNSC is capable of, of writing a letter of commitment to this. That is something they could do. It wouldn't mean anything beyond the support of the nations here, though. Russia supports yes. this proposal. Uh, yes, as well, uh, because I believe this, this proposal actually is based on a UN, uh, UN, uh, UN, uh, UNGA um, resolution. I don't so know we're not voting right now. Does anyone want to speak on uh, this again? Because I, 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 we will say something if not. All right, in that case, the United States would just like to firmly say that we will veto anything relating, uh, even in terms of the statement of purpose regarding a two-state solution for Israel, although we are, are committed towards finding uh, a reasonable outcome towards the crisis that has been there for quite some time. We are in full support of the Israeli state and will not uh, agree or allow anything to be passed by the UNSC that is not uh, explicitly discussed when agreed upon by the state of Israel. So we will veto anything relating to this. All right. Moving on. Um, okay, so relating to the UN statements for the Ireland issue. With the concern of the Irish government, the United States uh, Nation Security Council is willing to establish peacekeeping forces in Ireland to stop the recent raids on Irish military bases, as well as keep the peace and maintain the Good Friday Agreement. Uh, one, uh, we've already asked if anyone wanted to speak. They do not, so we're going to formally put this to a vote. We will therefore do a roll call vote. Um, so let's begin. Uh, first off, also guys, you got to have your country on your profile, because I, if I don't know who you are, I don't know what to tell you. So, um, uh, Do you want me to change mine? Yep, same with, same with the co-op on and Charles, and only one of you needs to be up here as well. So, uh, let's start with um, Ireland. Uh, abstaining, then. Uh, you, United Kingdom, voting on the uh, the Irish proposal. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. I was not paying attention. I'm sorry. Uh, I, uh, uh, the UK votes agree, or uh, with. I can't remember what the actual formal word is. Uh, you, you are in favor? In favor, so yeah, in favor, in favor. Okay, Ukraine? Favor. Uh, China? Favor. France? Abstain. Uh, Russia? Uh, abstain. United States will, uh, support this. Uh, Norway? In favor. Jamaica? In favor. Very well. In that case, the motion uh, will pass and UNSC will send a group of blue helmets in order to keep the peace in Ireland. Are there any other proposals at the UNSC meeting? I'll give you like 10 seconds to DM me. If not, uh... Okay, in that case, there are no other matters uh, on the table. Does anything else want to be uh, added to the agenda for even discussion before we call an end to the UNS UNSC meeting? Hearing no formal motion to add anything to the current agenda of this UNSC meeting, and having already voted on the current thing added to the agenda, we will go ahead and end this UNSC meeting uh, here today. So.
You're welcome. Just a reminder, in future meetings, if you ever want to see who will be chairing, who will be note-taking, and who will be on it, uh, we have the document on the website. I've already linked it in the announcements. If you want to see if your country will be a rotating member on certain years, it's whatever of the year we hold these meetings that rotating members will be on or off it. So take a look at that if you haven't already. That being said, we are going to bring this meeting to a close and continue the game. So thank you all for being here. They stopped. Well, good. All right, we were trying to push through an act and we did not succeed due to the fact that we just lost support of the government. So we'll keep going on political war games. By the way, um, Hamu. I'm, not, I'm my... not running this and I'm not dealing with this right now. You need to go speak with Sniper. All right, fair enough. Yep. I'm trying to find Sniper's GC. Just win GC1 would be all fine. All right, okay. Thank you. All right. Well, that was a that was a, a hectic, hectic little little issue there. Anyway, back trying get back to what we were doing. What were we doing before all this shit? We were talking about the DEA and the Mexico and Brazilian uh, advisors, I believe. Um. Hello, Mr. George W. Bush. Actually, no, Secretary of Defense. Sorry. Oh, hello. You guys want to take this up a channel? Yep. Yep. Uh, Israel create the channel and I will join it. Alright. Alright, I, wa I walked in on it. What were you discussing your training? I apologize. I had I had a phone call with someone. Oh, no. I just got back from Iraq. Um, Saddam was uh, trying to uh, get some reconciliation efforts going, but um, he demanded something pretty in uh, insane, which was the, uh, the military base right next to his thing, which is something we cannot give up at the moment. He wants us to give up the Kuwaiti, the Kuwaiti military base? Yes, of course. That's that's a laughable proposal. He's in no position yeah. to be making demands. He yeah, suggested he wanted to reconcile, but that's 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 just abhorrent. Yeah. Yes. Um. Maybe. Um. I did get something going. Maybe if we could get a uh, some talks going. Uh. Maybe just try to go away from the military base and see if we could get them to just uh, agree to um something. But I'm not quite sure if they will. Maybe they need some. One of uh, with a big authority in the United States to kind of just tell them that uh, the Kuwait military base is just not up for grabs. I can give Saddam uh, a phone had... call, but I'm not. I'm not going to go to his country. I mean, uh, is... I, I to... said, I would hmm? say a phone call. Um, Saddam was pretty hesitant in leaving his country as well. So I say a phone call would most likely. Yeah, be the I, best I, I certainly will not be taking a trip there. All right, I'll, I'll go ahead and give him a call. You, if you would like to speak with a, actually, at our peak, uh, were we? We were we still? No, he's gone. Okay, so we're fine. Out of RP really quickly, um, given the current situation with things, I'll kind of let you go on your own, so you don't need to be telling me what to do, because if anything, it's the other way around. So I'll go call yep. Saddam. Yep. All right, very well. Hello there. Hello. Am I speaking with uh, Saddam Hussein? You are. Uh, this you is- uh, called my office. I did, I did. We, we, have, we have your number, so to speak. <laughs> We've had it for quite a while. Uh, I'm calling you, you up over. Yeah, I don't remember Sorry? giving that to your general secretary, but. Uh, it don't matter. Anyway. We, we, it, you don't need to concern yourself with this, all right? Listen, I, I heard from Shady that you were making some pretty uh, some pretty odd demands regarding the United States, things about making us pull out of our, our bases in the Middle East. Is this true? Well, I think that it was pretty reasonable. The United States, as you may know, approached Iraq and said that you would like to uh, negotiate opening the door to investments and maybe helping us in our state but we did uh, but if you want to really do that you would have to put the gun of america that is pointed at iraq's head which is your base down and hold uh, on was this was this cheney he was he was wanting to make economic deals with you yeah you're vice president you're uh, secretary, yeah, of course, uh, of course. I know whatever. all about that. I am very informed on these issues. You understand, okay? Um, regarding the base, that's non-starter. Uh, Saddam, if you're thinking that you could waltz in here and, and take away America's military interests in the Middle East, that's just not. We're not going to play ball with that. You understand? You've unlawfully annexed the chunk of Kuwait. I'm not here to debate with you base. the legality of American bases in the Middle East. I am. I am here. To, at the request of my VP to make it very clear to you that uh, we will not even begin to engage in such matters. Now, 
uh, I, I think I was a bit of, under a bit of a misinterpretation of where this was going. Um, if Cheney feels it is right for us to pursue economic deals with you, I'm sure that is the case. But uh, if you think that at any point the United States will give up its military bases and military interests in the Middle East, you have, an, you have another thing coming to you. I can tell you that. Well, uh, then I, I see that <clears throat> even though the United States has elected a new president, that the sentiment has not changed and you still see iraq as the evil that we are not and that you claim that we are well we i, are I would hazard guess like and you, say that so uh it would be quite evil to, to to demand that america which is a uh, is a is a force for peace and cooperation force in the world to, to pull to pull out of its its middle eastern holdings now that is just laughable i could tell you that so i take it there there is no way we can move forward on this and, and you will you will down this hill then Oh, I don't, well, I don't I, even like remind I you that we've done a lot like for I your told country. Like I many American ambassadors who have come to Baghdad, I was willing to, I am willing to open the door to reconciliation with the United States. But in order to do so, you have to put your weapons of war down. You have to get rid of your base that is in our Gulf. Well, Off but I, I don't border. think we have much else to talk about, do we now? No, I, it appears there's not. Well, uh, in that case, we will speak, uh, we may speak again soon. Yes, of course. How do I cut this phone line? Never <laughs> you can always use scissors. <laughs> no, uh, the, like, we just had a crisis in the straits. Alright, he's dealing with them. I'm gonna jump in an RVC. I want a minute here. I've been doing Diplo since day one and dealing with this bullshit. Alright, it appears that the that the DDoS guys who have been fucking with the server have stopped, at least for now. Fingers crossed, so hopefully we can get this game going a while longer. We haven't made a lot of time because they really fucked with the game. I want to go over a little bit of what we're doing in the U.S. right now because I've just been doing so much Diplo. Generally speaking, it is a Bush administration. This is obviously already an alternative timeline due to the ever policies and stuff. Uh, Bush and his campaigns, as opposed to real life, uh, he, he advocated for most of the same things he did, but he also advocated for cooperating more with Asian countries uh, due to the, 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 the rise of like the conservatives in China, which we'd already talked about, as well as at home providing uh, economic growth through tax cuts. That's why we're running a deficit right now. I've lowered the corporate tax rate and I'm going to lower that even more. We've increased taxes on regular people, uh, which is what happened in the Bush administration. We've decreased our corporate taxes. So our economy is growing quicker, most certainly, but uh, the cost is fairly high we're, we're running a pretty big deficit here let's actually go to what i wanted i wanted 40 and then a 22 percent tax rate on corporations generally speaking his main priorities at home will be economic expansion as well as foreign in terms of foreign policies switching american manufacturing out of china to places like indian stuff unfortunately the india player didn't show up today so we couldn't do a lot of the rp i wanted to do which kind of which kind of sucks uh to be honest that being said uh, we, we are going to shift a little bit more economically to the United States and things like that. Also, hello there. Good day. I, I wish to inform you that uh, the Prime Minister wishes to speak with you uh, shortly. There's no one on your country, by the way. We had a bugged lobby and Moose couldn't get back in, so there's no one on India. Yeah. yeah there was a I'm sure you've heard that we had, a, we had a group fucking with a server and stuff, so it's been a pain in the ass. But Oh, yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll ask for a sa save edit. Uh, Sounds good. I was like gonna ask and a few of the sectors. We could right. do one hot join. Uh, no, we we uh, hot joins are not allowed. We don't do any it crashes games, so that's not an option. You need to talk with sniper too. I'm not running this game. Uh yeah. well anyway, I, I assume you, uh, Prime Minister Vajpayee, you are here in Washington D.C. at my request. Thank you. It's an honor to be here. It's, it's good to have you in, in Washington. Uh, we spoke on the phone previously when it was not certain that I would win the election, though I would have confidence in the voters to, to obviously elect me. Now, that being said, uh, now that you are here in D.C., I think we can have a more private conversation. Now, I promised you a good fried chicken dinner, did I not? And I know you said you wouldn't eat it, but I have at least provided it for you if, you, if you'd like. I can't eat all of this myself. Well, it is indeed against... Uh good teachings to let food be there's, there's no there's no cameras in here prime minister there's no cameras in here i, I can assure you of that uh maybe maybe a few cia bugs <laughs> but uh i i don't know about uh anything besides that it's a joke of course there's there's none in here uh, we we had it we had it checked out but uh again there's no m one in here mr president i i must i i i i must tell you a story from my home country that once there were was a diplomat from from India that went to America and he was served uh, chicken steak and he ate it and he many pictures were, were taken of him but w w when he returned to his home country to his home 
state, he 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 lost all of his, his offices and he, he, his entire family. You see, you see any his, cameras in here, Prime Minister? I, you know, I, I won't push you on this. I understand if you don't want to do it. I'm just saying that there are, uh, there's no one in here but us. If you need second, if it's not me, if it's not you, you what, 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 what do you call um, uh, chicken beef, chicken steak? That, 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 that is not permissible, but I will eat this chicken, yes. Wonderful, wonderful. I, I can assure you it's good. I eat it almost every day myself. But anyway, I, we don't get caught up in this. It's just a fine meal. I'd love to share my culture with you. And uh, I, again, I, I think there's no finer example of American cuisine than some good Indeed. fried chicken. So uh, anyway, I apologize. I didn't, uh, I didn't want to make a political issue out of this. As I said, there's no cameras in here. So mm -hmm. this, isn't, this isn't the Nixon administration. <laughs> but anyway, um, <laughs> regarding, regarding the future, I just uh, I want to make it very clear that I view the special relationship that I hope we can cultivate between India and the United States to be very key to my to my plan to shift away manufacturing from China to uh, mm. to to other regions, uh, good friends like yourself, of course. And we spoke on the phone, and I just like to make sure that uh, you, you wish to continue what I proposed previously. Yes, yes, we 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 do indeed, and we also want to, of course. As, as we know that that your industries and your military industries have great demand for uh, both, both rubber and precious metals, we want to, of course, offer uh, offer uh, investments back into the American economy, in particular um, for license production. Uh, the, the Indian in, the Indian military production as now as of now is is uh, is getting more and more out of date we we, we saw ourselves mm. in mm. in the recent conflict with with n recent border skirmishes with, with pakistan at, yeah, that there um, that there kashmir uh, i have read about that yeah. tragedy yes, tragedy yes, yes. for their their um of course the casualties were 10 times as high uh, as i must say as the prime minister but um certainly Fighting in, in in such ways is, is listen listen is here honest. listen listen here Prime Minister Prime yeah. Minister Prime Minister, I can tell you for sure in America we wish to pursue all options with a relationship with India and if that comes in the form of providing you with with equipment to modernize your military I'm mm. sure we can work that out now I don't handle those details myself I don't I don't I don't, I don't I don't I don't have quite the time for that now, now Dick Cheney my VP great man you you you'll go along great with him he'll be happy to to flush out those deals with you I, I will say that of course there are some security. Uh, technologies that we cannot just hand away, even to a good friend like yourself. But I'm sure we can come to an agreeable arrangement that allows you to protect your borders in Kashmir from the Pakistanis. Is, mm. is this is this something we we can agree upon? Yes. Good. Glad to hear that. Now regarding the economic ties, I mentioned to you previously the possibility of moving manufacturing from China to India. Uh, now, obviously, yeah. that'll take a lot of capital, and we're, of course, happy to provide that with our many corporations. There's a lot of money we can move around, of course, but I'd just like to ask yourself that we can ensure that there are no red strings in your country Stop us from expiting this. I, I have to explain to the American voters why the hell uh, we're not being able to buy cheap goddamn, you know, you know, those ball sacks of the old cars, you know. I got one of my truck back in Texas. They're nice. It's American. It's American tradition. You understand? But if that starts, if we like, you can't buy those from the goddamn gas station, well, what I'd say to American voters, you understand? What we can, what we can do, I think, is uh, first of all uh, change our trading law, uh, trading laws, so that more of our resources can be. Uh, exported uh, to other places we, we, there are certain laws with which currently uh, favor uh, internal uh, consumers of raw materials uh, over external uh -huh. and we will yeah. uh, uh, we, 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 we wish to offer uh, a trade uh, trade agreement where uh, America is more uh, is more um, privileged and, and such uh, i think preferred trading status would be uh, at the very least yes. we'd we'd expect out of such an arrangement yes, 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 we have many raw resources we import right now from countries that we have good partnerships with but if obviously we can we're gonna have a situation where we don't have to be as deep of a trade deficit mm. due to uh, things like that that'd be that'd be most agreeable again i have to work that out with uh with yes, uh yes. with my ministers of course but uh 
Yeah, I think that that'd be mighty that'd be mighty fun. Dependent on on uh, of course the levels. Uh, I I I do not believe uh, India can uh, invest exactly as much as as you uh, invest in us. Uh, oh, of course not. Of course not. We got we got a big old economy. We got a lot of GDP <laughs> and things of that nature. And we understand that India does not uh, have the privilege of our of our uh, competitive markets. Um, mm. So in terms of any uh, sort of economic mutual investment, we don't expect a, uh, an equal amount. Well, I think there will be a fair degree of capital flow going into in mm. a, in the, that there India, uh, more so than back home here. And I, I understand yeah. that. Just don't don't make that public. I don't want I don't want the yes, the, yes. Uh, the ROC. I don't want to get calls from from the ROC or my father. Oh God, I would not want that. Uh, so just just keep that keep that behind closed doors. Can you do that for me? Yes. yes. I I, I I think we're able to uh, uphold uh, a trade uh, balance of say three to one, uh, or perhaps in what capacity? To, to, so per, you mean for raw per, goods, or you mean for investments? So per per uh, three mil three billion uh, uh, dollars, i.e., uh, off the sector side of RP. I, uh, I, I understand what you're saying. A three to one is an exceptionally uh, big deficit to the United States. You understand? Perhaps two to one if we include, uh, of course, license productions uh, and the like. I, I uh, can't do a three to one to you, Prime Minister. That's just not on the table. I could, I could do. Two to one. I, we were looking for more of a one point five to one. Is what we are looking for. Now that being said, if we can agree to that term in the beginning, we'll renegotiate that perhaps later. But we're also happy to obviously, as part of that deal, provide you with the modernized equipment for your military, which mm. I'm sure will provide you the security, stability, and apparatus mm. to not have to worry about the Pakistanis. Indeed, indeed. I've uh, I've even received uh, uh, intelligence reports that uh, the Pakistanis are thinking about sending. Uh, support uh, to uh, to the Taliban as of now. Taliban, you you mean yes. you mean them there? You mean them the goddamn radicals out there, Middle East? You know, Cheney was telling me about that earlier <laughs> er, earlier today. We had a, we had a meeting with the Joint Chiefs. He was telling me all about that. Now we can't have that. And I've told you yes. that we will cooperate with you over the Pakistanis. Uh, they they mm. they are they are a group of people. I just don't I could never see eye to eye to uh, culturally, let mm. alone elsewhere. But my point being, we're gonna provide you security. Uh, cooperation and security equipment. So I think it is reasonable to expect a 1.5 to 1 uh, investment back and forth between our, our two countries. With investments, yes. Uh, however, um, with, uh, of course, uh, trade for natural resources, it's it's not free uh, to... Uh, of course, mine such such a uh, immense. For trade resources, uh, we expect uh, almost almost a trade equivalency. There are many of our partners who we have the option to get this from. Already, we have long-standing mm -hmm. deals with such uh, already within the NAFTA agreement, which gives us a, a tremendous advantage importing from countries like Canada and things like that. Now, there are some resources we can't get there, of course, and we'd we'll be happy to come to India, but to expect any aggrandizement of your economy over this is, uh, I don't think, very reasonable. Prime Minister. It's quite... Uh, no, normally, if one buys a certain good, uh, one pays the price uh, and reaps the reward if, if one buys, say... We already uh, we already got a trade deficit with you, though, Prime Minister Vashpayi. I was looking over the economic numbers uh, earlier, and, and, I, and I do found that we already have a sizable uh, trade deficit with you. Mm. We're importing. I agree. Let me look over the numbers here. Uh, let me take a look here. Got these. Got these. Uh, got these early. Yeah, I see here. We're already got a trade deficit of a, of a, a three sims with you that we're importing. Uh, we have no trade backs at all. Now again, I think if you trade with the United States, uh, there will always be a trade deficit with your country. We both know that very well. But to suggest that, for example, India wouldn't look to the United States for imports or anything they might need. Now that's that's a little bit silly, don't you think? We, we would certainly need uh, if if um, say these companies were to if we were were to remove uh, 
uh, hindrances for American companies to, uh, say, mine these resources, uh, i.e. Uh, which would in, in, indeed uh, give profits to American companies which would pay taxes in America and we would, which would uh, have uh, an employee, a lot of white-collar Americans. Uh -huh. uh, I'm, I'm perhaps some office sectors uh, as repayments. Um, that'd be, that'd, be, that'd be, yeah. be quite reasonable, I think. And as I said, as time goes on, I'm sure we'll scale up our imports of yeah. Indian resources. Uh, and in addition to that, we obviously run a sizable uh, oil deficit, but we know that your oil security is of pinnacle concern. I would be happy mm. to facilitate uh, contracts with the Saudis, among others. I don't know if you saw in the news, but uh, the previous administration, which uh, oh, it was our idea originally, but they took credit for it. Goddamn Clinton liberals, I swear. But uh, we, we made an agreement where we'd be able to have mutual ownership of Ramco like we did back in the day. It was a great achievement that, again, I want to reiterate, that was that was my goddamn idea. Clinton's, Clinton's staff received word of it. And they they took advantage of that situation to take that victory for themselves. It was, it was that was, yeah. Anyway, point being, we could facilitate mm. some good oil contracts for your country too. As I said, there's a lot of benefits. So I think as long as you're on the same page of the United States not having lopsided agreements with India, I think we will have no issue. If if your uh, balance of 1.5 to uh, one, um, the equipment types we're currently uh, wishing to. Uh, acquire is uh, of course a fourth and a half generation multilateral fighter uh, which we'll also spoken to the French about uh, we are also looking for uh, uh, your uh, <clears throat> your javelins and your uh, as long as that is not the most cutting edge technology the United States has to offer I'm sure that we could work out a deal for you to license those to uh, to any level you may wish that would be agreeable. Though I would ask that you speak a little bit with with the vice president about that. Is he 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 tends to deal with those sorts of matters. Mm. I, I will say, g g g given the level of production, I I believe that uh, a localized production in India uh, would be uh, agreeable. We are we are fully agreed on that. Then uh, I'm glad to hear that. In that case, I am going to go ahead. I've already approved the investment of a large degree of civilian manufacturing mm. in Delhi. And I think, uh, given this time, we'll go ahead and put another, put another hundred billion or so into into manufacturing in India. Is this agreeable to you? It, it is indeed. Well, it's very agreeable, sir. All right, um, we got that set up then. Uh, if if um, if your government could uh, uh, keep tabs on the numbers i'm um i'm afraid that uh, my secretary is is uh, out of rp i did four already uh, at the start and then i just did i think another nine huh? i did another huh? five so it's up to nine total yeah but obviously uh, you can't do that when you're not in the game so it's fine but yeah. it's we're RPing it so it's okay Okay. Anyway, uh, Prime Minister, is there anything else you'd like to speak about? Uh, again, it's lovely having here in the White House. Uh, is there any other matters you wish to discuss? Um, not right now. I I, be I believe we've spoken at length about uh, the Pakistani situation. Um, I I will say that that we have uh, of course remained skeptical uh, since uh, it's been. Less than two years since uh, we, we were in an armed conflict with with uh, the Pakistanis, even though uh -huh. the conflict itself was uh, only four months, three three months after. Uh, yeah, we, we understand the Pakistanis are aggressing uh -huh. all the time, and as I said, you have our support on that. Now, I'd suggest you go have a little talk with Dick Cheney before you leave DC. Okay. I, I'm sure he'd be able to work out the, the fine details of that with you. Okay. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you for, thank you for being here. It's a pleasure speaking with you. Likewise. Thank you, sir. Are we ready to call the French in just a minute? Say solve to Brazil. Taxation is theft. Thirty-nine percent is hyper th uh, thefts. Yeah, I mean taxes were very high in the Bush administration, except for corporations and the wealthy, which we've reflected here. So we've got very low corporate tax rate, very high regular tax rate, and we're running a deficit, which is what Bush did. So we're working on tax cuts right now. I'm not gonna. I would love to read these all out. We just simply don't have the time for it. If we had the time, I guess I can go through a few of them. Ending stages of Clintonomics, the ending months of the administration are upon us, and as such, we should start gearing up towards the election so that he did this stuff. Uh, 2000 Republican victory. Through determination, we have won over the Democratic adversaries. 
the people know what they need as such these tax cuts should help uh, them to pursue their needs. So we're just doing massive tax cuts, which is what Bush did when he took power. And then from there, we're going to work on deregulation of the financial sectors. Uh, we're going to do No Child Left Behind, which basically, oh man, I want to get into that, but... Major financial institution fails. Headlines have broken about a major financial institution going bust. The media is uh, running rampant with this and heading for the hills. We're going to subsidize them. It's a lot of money. That's half That's half a trillion. And then we're going to deregulate and increase uh, military spending. So that's what we're going to do right now. All right, we got to call got a French. He's around. Where is he at? Hello there. Hello. Oh, hello. Is the President Bush? It, it is. Good to speak with you. Uh, I think this meeting is overdue. I saw your public statement, President Shurok, regarding our veto, or, or my, my representative's veto at the UN. And I must say, I, that was very equally disappointed to see you calling us out publicly like that. Well, um, it's the Bush. I'm quite baffled by uh, the USA that is advocating for, 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 for peace and freedom and human rights. We'll be vetoing mm. such a proposal that will bring such things to the region of Pal uh, Palestine. I, I, I thought we saw eye to eye on this, the United States and France, in our mutual support for Israel. Where did your policy change where the French are not, su not supporting the state of Israel? Uh, we are supporting the state of Israel, but we are... You are advocating, advocating for a policy without consulting the Israeli government. I've had already calls from Prime Minister Barak. I think it's Prime Minister. But from uh, from the leader of the Israeli government uh, expressing their outrage over France, going behind their back to push a policy on the global stage without speaking with them. The United States well, supports Mr. Israel. Does France not support Israel? We are supporting Israel, Mr. Mr. Bush. Well, then but... you're sure as hell not showing that. I can tell you that. Uh, I'm showing it, Mr. Bush. We are, we are always been uh, I'm hearing a lot of anti-Israeli talk from you in regards to this. What you're advocating, going around the Israeli government, that's, that's just that's just reprehensible. The Israeli government uh, would have vetoed this or would be not on board with this anyway. We have tried to talk with them beforehand. So you admit you were pushing a policy not supported by the Israeli government. I'll ask you again. Are you against Israel, President Chirac? Monsieur, Monsieur Bush. Monsieur P no, Bush. I have it's to a say, simple question. I like a simple answer. The simple answer is that we are not against Israel. We are for peace. Well, in then the why are you acting support? like you are? Why are you trying to go around both them and the United States? I never received a phone call about you over this matter. Not once. I got, I got no letter, I got nothing. Just just an ambush, an ambush of my representative at the UNSC meeting. Is that a way an ally treats another President Chirac? Of course not, uh, Mr. Bush or Mr. Bush, Bush. But again, let me say it. We are supporting the two-state solution. The policy hasn't changed. We so are you do not support Israel. Solution. We are supporting Israel. We are supporting both, both states. A support of a policy not protected and supported by the Israeli government is not support. Are you saying the Israelis should have complete control over the Gaza and the West Bank and that Palestine should not be uh, given the chance to be not an, uh, an uh, independent nation as well? Mr. I'm asking Bush? you again, do you not support the current Israeli government? We are supporting the Israeli government. Then I think you need to change your behavior quite dramatically and start actually supporting our allies in the Middle East. I don't need to remind you, President Chirac, that the United States and France alike have very few friends in the region. Now, me and Cheney, my VP, we both think it is pinnacle that we provide support to our allies and, and we, we advocate for them. And I'd like to start to see you do the same. Uh, you seem supporting us, supporting actual peace, while the US seems to support, uh, well, more suffering, more human rights violations, and more, um, well, uh, humanitarian crisis uh, with the President veto. Chirac, I would like you and myself to take a joint flight and trip to Israel to speak with the leader there. If you are truly an ally and a supporter of Israel, you will you will give them your support. Is this something you would agree to? Well, of course, we can we can talk with Israel, but uh, our policy will not change. And I hope that you will be providing them actual support in that meeting and not what we've heard from you so far. We will. Uh, we will. Like but I said. In that case, but... uh, I, will, I, will, I will come into your Air Force One right now and I, and I will get us a flight on over to Israel. I expect to see you there. 
Is that agreeable? Let us say we have it, Mr. Bush. Wonderful. I gotta run this by Cheney. I mean, talk to Cheney real quick, though. I'll be right back. All right. My playing grounds. Cheney. Hello. Yes. Cheney, we, we got a bit of an issue here. The uh, as we know, the, the the French president Chirac he called out our country over not supporting their their ambush in the UNSC regarding regarding the Israeli situation, the, the two state situation. And uh, I'm about to I'm about to take Air Force One on over to Israel to have a talk with him, and I've had Chirac along too. Uh, Cheney, you don't need well, to, I'm already here. I know, but I'm role playing. Like I'm in a close meeting, so one moment. Uh, uh. Uh, uh, would you like to come with me, Cheney? I, I don't know. You 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 want to yes. take point on these sorts uh, of I would, issues? I, I would take. So I can't believe France would even think about doing this behind our backs and behind Israel's back. It, it is something outrageous. Oh, oh. absolutely outrageous! All right, Israel, yes. we want to head to your NBC. We're gonna we're gonna head to you. So. All right. All right. Wonderful. Well, let's go ahead and get on the Air Force One. Secretary of Defense, right, uh, any, any, anything I need to know, or are we we good to go? We are good to go. All right. Wonderful. Uh, I trust you, you will be uh, moving the arm and uh, the air front. Yeah, all day at the bottom. I apologize on behalf of uh, France for uh, what they suggested. I, I, I can't believe they would um, suggest that. I thought better of them. Hang on, there is a civil war in Jordan. Civil uh, war? Uh, I, I sh uh, I'm going to talk with them, actually. Uh, uh, yes, yeah, secondary defense. Uh, we'll give them any aid they need. Just let them let them know what we need, uh, what they need, and we'll yeah. give to them. Jordan, Jordan, Jordan. We cannot, have a, we cannot have a civil office government right next to Israel. That would be a recipe for disaster. I'm gonna support Jordan, Jordan too. Oh God, where is Jordan? Why is there so many chat? Oh, where is Jordan? Yeah, where is he? It's Palus. If you see the, could you drag me to it? Because I cannot see him. I'm I, is he even in the VC? Jordan, he's he's VC one sixty two. I see him. Oh right, wait, do you want to handle the up. hangers? Oh wait, yeah. no, not. Yeah, Go I can hop up there. His VC, right, cool. his VC is uh, full though, so he can't. Right, I guess we're just waiting for the French. Then oh, wait, no, he's I had, I had promises oh. from President Chirac that he would fly here. Oh, here you go. Uh, Mr. Bush, I have several very important intelligence. Before before we get started, I, I I'm here with President Chirac of France, who I've asked to come here to show that he actually supports the nation state of Israel. Like I, like I said to you, Mr. Bush, we are supporting Israel, but we support a two-state solution, which will bring, finally, peace to the region and prosperity. That would, not be, that would not be supporting Israel if Israel does not want that. Mm -hmm. I understand. The, the Israeli-Palestinian conflict is not a French conflict. Minister Barack, would you see us supporting a two-state solution as support for Israel? Yes. Uh, it depends I'm on what kind you. of solution, because uh, the the solutions that the lunatic Gaddafi propose are frankly fanatic and will never happen, especially when the current intifada is taking place. Israeli civilians are being killed on the streets, and uh, the prospects of peace are getting lowered by the day. What about the what about the Palestinian? Uh... Children and and women that get get killed uh, in 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 Palestine. Uh, the Israeli defense forces. Are, I just want to clarify. We don't need to get bogged down in the details here. I just want to clarify though. Sorry, so, like, every, everything that. everything I'm hearing from you, uh, President Chirac, is, is no support for Israel. I'm hearing nothing but a support for the enemies of Israel and support for Middle Eastern countries. Now, I want to make this very clear. This is a public meeting that we are having right now, and if we do not hear meaningful support towards Israel, the United States will have no choice but to make it very clear to the world that uh, France is no longer a friend of Israel. And I'm sure there's many European countries that would have something to say about that. Mr. Uh, Mr. Bush, I will, not be strong, uh, I, will, I will not be strong-armed by America. I make that clear Chirac. right now. All we have been hearing is, what about Palestine? What about Palestine? What about Palestine? We haven't heard, what about Israel from you? Not once. What about the Israeli civilians being yet, killed on the street? Not yet, and I have not heard from America once, what about Palestine? You're right. Yes, exactly. You're right. Because it, it is not. Israel is our ally here, and we'll stand with them. Again, let me reiterate. France was always a supporter of the two-state solution. And it well, was Israel. You, and, it was Israel and it was Israel who has not... Uh, was not abide to the UN resolution that was made back then. I, I will say that when other foreign countries define borders of two other countries, it's not historically gone well. 
I think a perfect example would be the Indian in um, the Pakistanian border. That was drawn by British, the mm -hmm. British people. And that wasn't the best solution to that. Mm -hmm. To that. I have I a like question a for Shiraz there. I think you don't foreign, mind me asking. But didn't uh, America agree to those uh, to this uh, UN resolution that was made back then? Yes, of course. But of course, we have to learn. Now we realize that it is not something we we can do. It is clearly not the way to go forward here. We have Mr. to. Cheney, I think, Mr. Cheney, I think it has it has nothing to do with learning, but it has something to do with uh, American exerting American influence. We're, we're, in we're, we're, we're getting really out of hand here. Now, I'd like to cooperate with you, President Chirac. I know, I know, Clinton in the li in the liberal government had a good working relationship with you, and I'm not opposed to that. But if you are uh, going against the interests of our allies in the Middle East like this. I, I really am going to struggle to find common cause to cooperate with the French. Now, we both know that you are an existential crisis in Europe against the Germans for control over the economies of Europe. And I like to say I had planned to support the French. But given your hostility to Israel, I, I don't. I think I may have to reconsider that. Now, you say we're strum arming you. Uh, you could say I'm using some forceful tactics, most certainly. But I think they are warranted given your hostility to the nation of Israel. Mr. Bush, where's this hostility? Uh, I'm just advocating backing, for peace and prosperity in this a, a hostile leader, a, a wild card agent of chaos in Gaddafi, a man who has spoken out uh, repeatedly and hostilely Bush, towards the United Bush, States. There is very, there is something I need to share with you. Of course. There's, there's no, no. Uh, we are not cooperating with Mr. Gaddafi. We, we, we just you are simply championing talking. his cause on the world stage. What would you call it? I'm championing the prospect of a two-state solution and finally bringing peace to the region. Bringing peace by supporting terrorism? They will stop. Listen, listen, Mr. How? Uh, will the I don't, I don't, hold on, I, just want, I don't see this words? conversation going on anymore. I, th I think we have seen here what I expected we would see, which is that the French president is outlining a policy that is anti-Israeli. And I think that the United States has a duty to the world to make it clear that uh, the French have an anti-Israeli foreign policy outlook. And, I, and I, I'm sure Israel will join us in making this clear to the entire world. Mm -hmm. Mr. Bush, what about me going to the Russians and getting support from them? Would you rather see that? <laughs> if, you, if you would like to go worship with a communist, I think that, that speaks more than anything I else think, today. The fact that you were threatening this. That, that, that is unbelievable. Anything. I'm not planning yes, anything. I'm just, uh, France is just more pragmatic in its approaches in foreign policy. We are a lot more flexible. And if, if America, and if America continues to be hostile uh, towards France, we will seek uh, other partners that uh, support our cause. It's just a natural order of well, things. I don't, I don't think anything else needs to be said here. Uh, I don't think there's anything else. And I'd like to say, I think, I think Europe, there's many nations in Europe that would find it very interesting that you immediately, your first, your first choice after being being given a clear outline of your policy towards Israel was to immediately suggest cooperating with the Russians, a communist Communist? supporter. I think I think there's many nations that would uh, that would um, not look too kindly upon this. The Russians were in favor of my proposal, which I'm also sure shows they were. that they are in favor of peace and uh, prosperity in the region. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure, sure because are. the proposal is quite favoring towards Palestine, and I'm sure they'd do anything to to make that deal go forward. It is not beneficial to any side. It just brings. Regardless, I don't think we need to continue this now. I, no, I apologize. States. I think this meeting needs to come to an end. Uh, I, I, I've had. Well, I believe the, the Israeli uh, leader has something he wishes to tell us. Uh, is this in for private or can can he hear it too? Oh, this is for private matter. In that case, I suggest the French uh, president to go back to France and Paris and take a good hard look at you at your own identity and your own values. I don't have to remind you that. Uh, that, that your lack of a support for Israel is an existential one. Mr. Bush, uh, I, I will, uh, okay, I will do that. And uh, I just want to remind you, there will be times when the U.S. will be reliant on French help. And then, I uh, please, uh, please remember, please remember your words, Mr. Bush. Have you, have nice not, you have not, you have not insulted us. You have insulted Israel. That is the issue here. I've not insulted this well. I'm just advocating for a two-state solution, which is a peaceful one. Goodbye, Farewell. Mr. Bush. Farewell. Goodbye. Farewell. Well, Mr. Bush, I got uh, very uh, good intelligence to suggest that Iraq is building a chemical facility. A chemical you, facility? Want... Yes. So do you want to have a facility? Uh, what kind of facility? 
your receiver report that Iraq is developing a chemical facility from the looks of it. The facility appears to process chlorine and other chemicals into a gas state. This facility sits uh -huh. in the desert close to the Jordan border. The plant surely appears suspicious. That is from the chlorine, chlorine plant. Are they, are they planning on making a lot of a lot of pools? Are they trying to try to get a lot of cleaner for their, their private pools in Baghdad? I I would I would think that they are doing it to enrich their chemical uh, weapons industry, as they have used it against Iran. Yeah, well that's that's a problem. Cheney, what you think about all this? Uh, he's not here. <laughs> oh God damn it! Hey, that, that rascal. Where did he get off to? God damn it! He, he deserted well, you. Well, shit. Um. Also, Iran is heading towards a nuclear weapon. Oh, we're well we aware have... of that, and we, we've, we've made it abundantly clear that, that any attempts to gain nuclear weapons by them will be will be treated uh, unequivocally. Now, if, I, if Iraq is making been... these uh, these these chlorine uh, these chlorine uh, chemicals and that and that and such, then we we got a real problem on our hands here. Now, I, I got to run this by Cheney. I'm gonna be honest. He, uh, I respect his, his 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 outlook when it comes to the Middle Eastern countries like this, and I'm sure he yeah. knows all about this here chlorine. But um, I think this is a real problem, and we'll look into it. And I hope you understand. We you fully support your, your interest. Ah, oh. well, what, what should we be, would what are you, be what are you proposing? to cooperate between the Mossad and the CIA to lay the groundworks for for a potential bombing of that facility, so that it may not be used for any uh, illegal activity. What do you think? We have confirmation of the chlorine. Uh, yes. You, can, you, can, you, can you give me came... evidence? Yes, I will give you evidence. If you got evidence Thanks. of these chlorine facilities, then I think we have a duty to take action. Now, I know that the, the Mossad are very capable, and I'm sure the CIA director will agree fully with me to, to do a limited uh, strike here. But I, I, I want to reiterate, we, we need that evidence. I need you to give that to my government and have uh, me, my, myself, and Cheney look that over. Mm-hmm. Well, that's the evidence we have gathered so far. Wonderful. Well, keeping abreast of that situation, I will say, I'm sure that uh, me, the Joint Chiefs, and Cheney would, would, would be able to discuss that. And uh, I'm sure the CA director may confirm this. But uh, we need that evidence first. You understand? Yes, I do. Wonderful. Wonderful. Oh, well. oh, you actually got a DM from him. Yeah. Oh, man. Okay, it's a full-on thing. You ever see the port? All right, that's legitimate. Uh, in that case, you have a... Uh, you know he's not here. I'll I'll see him. I got I got to look behind me sometimes. You know Cheney he can uh he, he can hide. He's a wily he's bastard. A There's a couple man. of times I've I've been having meetings in the White House and I won't even know he's there. I'll be I'll be having a talk. I'll be I'll be I'll be eating fried chicken in the evening. I think I'm all alone. Just just relaxing at the Oval Office saying uh oh my god the song and uh and well he'll pop up right behind me. That is scary. I can assure you, but he doesn't yeah. care to be here. I will say limitedly the United States will support this action uh for the chlorine facility in Iraq. Uh. Mm -hmm. No, he's not we here. Shall... Uh, we, we'll approve that. We shall commence the bombing soon. Then. Wonderful, wonderful. Please don't have that trace back to me, though. Uh, I'm sure the voters will not appreciate that. But uh, we'll provide we'll provide the resources needed. Also, we have proof that Iranians are searching for uranium. Out of uh -huh. RP, we can we can see their entire focus and what they've done. So, well, they are going after it. Yeah. Mm hmm. Well, out of RP, there's nothing we can do besides so complain about it, so. Yeah, true. So, yeah. Uh, we are going to go ahead and uh, bomb this uh, chemical facility. In that case, I will have to take a, a flight back to DC. Uh, there's a lot there's a lot, of, a lot, of, a lot of objects in motion, so to, so, so to speak. And uh, I think our use of strategy here will be absolutely uh, decisive in preventing the development of chlorine facilities in Iraq. So you have our full support for this. All right, well, thank you, Mr. Bush. Thank you. We'll speak again soon. Very well. Building chemical facility. I do not think we can find a common ground between USA and Iraq, sadly. What do I miss? I apologize. Just got in. Nothing much. I, I, I'm going... I went to Italy and I just informed them of France's... Uh, of what their policies and I'm planning on going to Germany and uh, the UK as well and just inform them of what France has done uh -huh. and just keep, keep them educated on 
on this, but that's good to hear. That is about it. Trinity, I want to have a talk with you. We got we got to talk about the budget. I know I know these tax cuts. I mean, I was fully supportive of them. This is my policy, yeah. your policy too. Uh, I, I gotta say, hmm? yeah, I noticed we are in a bit of a big deficit here, and, and we, it's uh, hard to justify it to the American. We're about a bit of a deficit. I think we need to we need to discuss uh, what I spoke about before, which is potentially looking at Social Security again and potentially providing some cuts to that, as well as the, yeah, uh, I, some. Cuts I don't think to, Social uh, Security uh, is as important as the liberals make it out to be, and I think no, we, we can definitely afford. Some now, listen, I, I think it's a lot of wasted money. Now, we got to provide for the elderly in the United States, of course, but I, I think the luxurious standard of living we're giving them is a little much. I think we could provide some cuts there as well as some cuts to uh, to, 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 to health subsidies of, of, of the government. I, I don't think we need to be bankrolling yes. what should be a state's issue. You understand? Yes, of course. It should be the states who are deciding, not the federal government. Agree. I agree. Uh, in that case, for our, our new policy, I'm going to go ahead and we'll, we'll we'll put that in a bill for next year. We'll 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 cut we'll cut uh, Social Security. We'll, we'll cut uh, health care down as well. I mean, I think we can yeah, so we can provide emergency features. But beyond that, it's a it's a waste yeah, of resources. Our, yeah, with our majority in government, uh, Democrats can't do much to it. To object absolutely, to it. absolutely. Glad we agree. Wonderful. Well, you look much more balanced out now. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I will be taking my way on to Germany and to the uh, UK now, and just informing them of. Well, uh, France, and uh, it seemed like Italy was also very um, understanding. Though I actually do wish to say one thing: I did have a meeting mm -hmm. with the uh, <clears throat> with the uh, what is it, the Swiss, and they expressed their intentions of potentially joining NATO. Yes, I know I was surprised too, but they they told joining me NATO. They yes, they, they said that um they've seen the uh, I guess I was assuming the rise the re rise of communism, and they, they're just very concerned about their safety, and they, they told me. And in 2003, in their next election, they could potentially try to get NATO um, or membership where they could apply. But I'm not quite too sure about this, if they will follow through with this, but they, that is what they told me. I find that to be quite surprising, but if they wish to yes. cooperate with NATO, I see no problem with it. Uh, Secretary of yes, Defense, Cheney, I'm sure you don't. I was very surprised, but of course, it is something we wouldn't object to. Well, I'll say, I'll say we give it our blessing if they wish to. Uh, more more collaboration in Europe is better for everyone else. Yes, of course. And I well, believe I'll be off to the uh, the UK now. All right, I'll, I'll see you soon, Trini. Hey, well, goodbye. All right, we got a second. Right. So we're gonna we're increasing military spending. Secretary of Defense, uh, any 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 news to report that we've seen? Uh, about military, uh, not so much. But there are some news to report about the Middle East. Ah, oh, well, what's what's going on? Our, if this uh, is about the chlor the chlorine centers, I've already been uh, been been notified of that by the by the by the leader of Israel. Uh, we actually went to about uh, to Iraq to talk about that, but they appear to pretend that they have no idea what we are talking about. Well, that's now, uh, that's a that's a damn tragedy. We tried to reconcile with them, and we really did with my diplomatic skills. We tried to negotiate them with them, but it appears that they, are, they do not seek reconciliation that would be on terms with, 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 what, with what we can offer. So you're telling me uh, that they are developing uh, chemical weapons of a destructive nature and they have no intent to stop? Correct. They only, uh, well, uh, their demands for us to reconcile with them would be also dismantle, well, amongst all things, uh, the, uh, and the sanctions, uh, start the oil export and dismantling of Kuwait naval base, which in my opinion is uh, completely unacceptable. That is, uh, that's, that's just unacceptable. I mean, we're not going to play ball if they're trying to throw around things like that. That's just not an option. Period. Period. Uh, if they pursue these weapons further, I think we're going to need to discuss the possibility of uh, a more concrete action. What does Cheney have to say about this? I know, I know, he's a. Uh, uh, I can't, I can't. Uh, he left on that trip, I think. But uh, what, what did he have to say about it? He said what you said, basically. Uh, mm. We do not see reconciliation with Iraq happening anytime soon. Well, we'll have to. We'll have to put all options on the table. That's quite unfortunate. Uh, regarding the situation, the the, the, the two-state solution, we got we got the French who have who have been uh, who have been acted pretty strangely, I have to say, and, and quite extreme. If you would be able to, I'd like you to take a trip to Turkey to speak with uh, President Isevit uh, and see if you could get Turkey to put some pressure 
on other Middle Eastern countries to provide a bit more of a, a lessening of, of pressure on Israel. You think you could do that? Uh, uh, I think Turkey is not in my sphere, uh, well, in, in, not in my uh, uh, designated zone, but uh, out, out of I RP, think like two of our cops didn't show up today, so we gotta. It's kind of more situational. Yeah. Yeah. So wh what you're saying is to apply pressure for them to support Israel. Is that what? A I'm little saying? bit of pressure, but also offer them the carrot. You know, I think some mutual investments could be secured if they wanted to cooperate more with us. Uh, so you know, don't, don't hit them too hard with a stick there. <laughs> Should be specifically. Target uh, about it. American corporate uh, investments in a Turkey and uh, office complexes in Ankara if they were to cooperate with us. All right, so uh, I'm going to talk with Turkey. How about nearby nations? Is there any nearby nations I should also talk about with? Uh, that's the only ones I can think of. Now, speaking with the Egyptians wouldn't be a bad idea. That they're, that they're Mubarak. I know we got a good relationship with him, so give him a call up too. Got it. Well, uh, I also want to report a few things that, for example, Lebanon uh, has been quite... Uh, they have uh, liberated themselves from any Syrian influence. We've seen that. And, they, they, have and, a, they have a Western democratic movement there now. Yeah. Uh, about Syria. Syria also appears to have neutral relations uh, with us. Uh, they also, hey, hey, um, in our opinion, are seeking to cooperate with us in the future. Well, I'm going to trip over there and talk to them about options as well. But uh, one, one moment, though. Uh, what's up? Hey, uh... Right on point. Uh, we do have. Um, I did speak with the uh, UK, and they were a bit, tiny bit concerned, but it wasn't the biggest issue to them, as it, it hasn't been the first time that France has made open threats like this. But um, mm. on a different topic, uh, it appears the Taiwanese have gone to the uh, the French for protection. When they went to us, we um, told them we wouldn't let China kind of um, invade them freely, but we still kept uh, strategic ambiguity. Uh -huh. Um still as a strategy and it appears that they have directly gone to France and now France has uh, made an open statement uh, just informing uh, just informing that she will apparently defend Taiwan and now France is offering to put her uh, carrier fleet in Taiwan which is a uh, quite a massive Not offering uh, they already did Man, these goddamn they try to go around our backs these goddamn French these Gaulism fuckers they think that they can walk on over the United States of America I'm not having it they go against our interests in the U.S. Security Council. They don't support our, our friends in the Middle East. And now they are going around us to outmaneuver us. This is not happening. Trady, what options do we have? I'm not sure. We could we could consider um, heavy economic sanctions against France for their for their traders' behavior. I think that is some... I, I think sanctions was, were just... Presence. They just backfire on our ass. You know what? If they want to play this way, I think we should pull our fleet out of Taiwan. Let me speak with Taiwan first. Let, let me see what I, I If can they want to go hide behind the French, we have no reason to spend money on American military resources in Taiwan. Very well. I if will they, they want to play clear. us off each other, well, I think we pull ourselves out. I, I make this very clear. I'll make it very clear to them. All right. I, I'll be on my way. Very well. Goodbye. God damn it. God damn it, French. They also suggest increasing military presence in the NATO European countries due to the rising tensions in the world, in overall world. France being uncooperative with America is not preferable, and you know what? We do not Fuck it. Show our uh, support. Uh, Rumsfeld, I want you to take a flight to Berlin, and I want to make it clear. Uh, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to Berlin myself. Uh, you, you, you go talk with the Turks. I'm going to take a flight to Berlin. All right. Got it. Influence works again. Oh. Thanks. That's not good. It's fine. All right, I'm gonna go take a shower, I guess. Peace. Yeah. See you later. Get on. Uh, good day. Yeah, he was on. Oh. Ah, good day. Greetings. Am I interrupting anything? Uh, oh, no, no, not oh. Wonderful. I'm, I'm here to speak with uh, Chancellor Schroeder. I'm gonna say. Uh, yeah, I took a flight on over here to speak with you directly as I am absolutely livid. There's no way to put it. These goddamn French, they are getting in America's business. They are trying to come around us at every turn, and I'm getting sick and tired of it. You know You're what? telling I me. I've, I was just in negotiations with the Algerians. You know what they're doing? They're expanding their influence, and they call, they're they trying to stake out spheres. They are pissing me off. Listen, I, I want to make this abundantly clear. I'm going to tired of working with the French. They've got a stick so far up their goddamn ass. I, I don't think exactly. we, can, we, we can extract it with a medical operation, you understand? So I'd just exactly. like to fly here to Berlin and have a formal talk with you, Chancellor Schroeder. 
about more exclusive cooperation in Europe or Germany. Now we value NATO and we're gonna keep we'll keep that going. But if the French want to outmaneuver us in Taiwan with their bullshit, I see no reason we can't do it in Europe. I would like to discuss the possibility of economic ties, economic mutual investment, and potentially the creation of a trade agreement that would be exclusive. So as Germany can import American goods directly through Hamburg, going around France entirely. You know what? I'm completely on board for this, sir. I couldn't agree more. I'm absolutely loving this opportunity, and I'd love to expand on these talks. You know, I, I know we, we didn't fight a war together. We fought you. But we're dealing with a very different Germany now. We're dealing with a very, very different France. I can't see myself working with a Chirac, a charlatan. Nothing, nothing else than that can be said. And I, and I think a more exclusive ties with Berlin would be would be in our interest. I think it, indeed it would, it, it, and it would be of great pleasure if we could form proper ties with the United States, not bound by other European states. I agree. I agree. In that case, I'd like to, to discuss the possibility of a trade agreement, 100 billion in American investments into our corporations going further into Germany, uh, as well as continued uh, exclusive cooperation economically with Germany, as well as other states entirely. I hope that you do not have a too many ties with France of your own. No, I, I actually have little to none as of now. We, we've not signed any major agreements. That's good to hear. To this day. Um, we can, we can uh, reciprocate by investing 100 billion of civilian industry of your choosing. Yeah, if you could, if you could, inv one, one moment. Uh, if you could, if you would invest in the Rust Belt in, in, in the Midwest of the US, we, we are trying to bring manufacturing back there. That'd be most agreeable. We'd be happy to produce very low cost for German uh, corporations, Volkswagen, things like that. And then we'll expand our own, uh, our own office complexes in Berlin. Is this agreeable? Uh, yeah, that'll work. Anyway, Wonderful. it's fine for us. Uh, where, where did you want it again? In the Rust Belt, uh, Ohio, Pennsylvania, oh. Indiana, and maybe a bit in Florida if you got we've got a little extra. Yeah, we can we can we can put a lot into Ohio. That is lovely. That is lovely. I'm I'm actually Mr. President. It is actually an honor that you've you've proposed these talks to us and you've given us these opportunities. Uh, we are sending the trades immediately. Uh, Wonderful. The free trade agreement, I completely agree on. And um, I'm guessing you would want a, perhaps a statement as, uh, announcing us our public relations. Absolutely. If you could do so and make it clear that America's government will be ensuring that all previous uh, exports we had to Europe that have gone through French ports or, or, or French airspace will now be going through Hamburg entirely. Yes, we'll get to that immediately. I also would like to ask before we go any further, I do hope Germany supports Israel. Oh, uh, I, I'm, I have not really been too vocal on the issue, but um, I, my, my government is intending to look into it. We, w uh, we would like to ask if you would be willing, if you would formally condemn the, the nation of France for their anti-Israeli foreign policy. Their, their, um, their advocacy of anti-Israeli actions is just unacceptable. I'm open to condemning France for a whole wide range of issues, not simply to do with Israel. I understand. Uh, they've been attending to apply pressure on nations in Africa, trying to exercise neo-colonialism, as it seems. So Goddamn right. Disgraceful. With the French. Sickening bastards. It's oh, disgusting. Oh, praise America. Mr. Absolutely. President, are you ready for talks now? Well, which country are you? I'm not a country yet, but I, uh, I want to support the great uh, nation of America. The no, they're not, they're not right now. Uh, one second. I will, let me finish up with the Germans. Uh, generally speaking, uh, I will say that we are committed to this relationship. And, and if and if France wishes to go against us, we'll find our partners. And I'd, I'd, I'd like Germany to be that in Europe. Can we count on one another? Chancellor Schroeder. Indeed you can, sir. Indeed Wonderful. You. I must say, you have sated my anger quite a lot with your most reasonable uh, words here. It, it is good to see that we still have friends in Europe. And it's glad to know that we have a friend in Washington too, so. Good to hear. Good to hear. Damn right. Anything else I can do before I return home? Uh, no, uh, not particularly at this moment. All right, we'll speak with you soon then. Been an honor. Cheers. Bye bye. Uh, hello, Mr. President. Hello there. Is that uh, is that President Azania? Uh, this is uh, President Anzar of Spain. Oh, that's not. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I, I apologize for keeping you waiting here in D.C. I was just over in Berlin speaking with uh, the Chancellor regarding the, the travesty of French foreign policy. Yes, they appear to be uh, 
bit lenient on certain matters that they should not be. Lenient? They're, got, they're trying to outmaneuver us. No, no, no other way to put it. They think they're a modern power when they're nothing but a goddamn backwater. Ugh. I apologize. I'm a little upset over this matter. Uh, what, 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 what brings you to DC? I have came to discuss the concern of a rising uh, communist terror group within Spain. Communism? In Spain? Yes, it is mostly in the Basque region. Uh, they have been conducting bombings throughout Spain, car bombings, train bombings, you name it. One of them even, one of these bombings caused the deaths of three American citizens, and I believe this would have been a, a few. I'm sure I had that report. I just, I've been away. I've been away on this, this diplomatic mission. I'm sure I just haven't read this yet. This is uh, unacceptable and a tragedy. But what action has your government taken to, uh, to deal with these terrorists? We have started cracking down a riot in Galicia was linked to the terror group, so we shut down the Galician parliament temporarily to take care of any matters involving this but it is still very limited in what we can do so we request the help of american authorities in our efforts any help we can give we will give what, what do you need from us uh possibly uh intelligence agents within spain to help us counteract the terror organization that is conducting these raids we are actually already in, in need of expanding our CIA operatives. Out of RP, I only have one, and I want to keep it on counter intel because I assume players are going to try and steal shit from me. Uh, in RP, we'll, we'll send them, basically, because I need to expand the CIA. Sound good? Yep. Cool. Yeah, we can absolutely do that. I'll, I'll have I'll speak with the CIA director, and we'll, we'll have some, some help sent over you for counter tear. Anything else we can do for you? Uh, that will be all for now. Wait, there is one more thing. Um, mm. Possible mutual investment, if... Well, first question before we go anywhere else with that is, what is the Spanish's current outlook on the French? We do not hold any strong stance on the French, but we have not heard anything good about them recently. We'd be happy to do mutual investment with you in a very generous one, but we'd require two things from you. First off, we'd ask that you pursue no deals with the French at present unless they change their course of action. And two, we would like the Spanish government to put out a formal condemnation of the anti-Israeli foreign policy of france is this something you'd be willing to do yes mr president good then we, we could discuss mutual investment uh we we got quite a lot of foreign capital flow we can make happen right now what are you what are you looking at uh office sectors likely is what we are looking for we could do a two for two deal on office sectors we were, we we're looking at bringing back American manufacturing back to the Rust Belt, so we're less interested in Spanish corporate interests in the U.S. and more in uh, manufacturing. Is this something you'd agree to? Yes, of course. How about a hundred billion for a hundred billion? Uh, can your government support that? Uh, we are. I am not sure at the moment. Uh, we are currently recovering so from an economic crash that hit us. Last Out of RP, year. I can only do two, so I can do fifty-six billion, two for. Uh, 56 equivalent civs. Could you do that? Uh, 56 equivalent. Yeah, I cannot. Hmm. I can. I, I'll just have to take out a little bit of money from my. Sounds good. We can make that happen. We'll. I'll, I'll get some contracts signed up, and we'll get. We'll get those American corporate investments into into Madrid, uh, immediately. All right. It was a pleasure doing business with you. You as well. You as well. Looking forward to cooperate with the Spaniards in the future. Uh, just out of roleplay, where should I put the, uh... Out of RP, if you could put them in, like, uh, like, Pennsylvania, uh, if you could. And, actually, no, maybe, actually, let's do... Indiana, how about that? Where is, where is Indiana? Right next to Ohio. Are you American, Sand? No, I'm Canadian. What? Oh, fuck. I can never tell with those accents. Yeah. You you have a valid reason, so that's fair. Yeah, it's just it's just next to Ohio on the left, so cool. Okay. Wonderful. Glad to do business with you. Right. Thank you. You as well. All right. Well, out of RP, this has been a very hectic game, which is about what I figured it was. Now, I'll be honest. I didn't expect this to go this way. I had originally planned to work really heavily with the French, so um, that's really interesting things have gone this way. That's crazy that he immediately said he'd just go work with the Russians. The Russians are communists. 
Like, Zukanov's a communist, so that was wild. Well, that's how RP goes. You just don't know. You do not know uh, the way things will go. Boo, Illinois? Yeah. Well, you're Pennsylvanian. You would say that. <laughs> that's fair. We already got a lot of investors coming into Pennsylvania, so we're fine. Okay, so let's go over what we're doing governmentally because we have a moment here. Uh, generally speaking, I'm just going down Bush's historical policies, broadly speaking. Uh, we're working on education reforms right now, which is children of the nation's future are such we must begin to reform the school systems to the latest technologies. This is the no child left behind policy. Uh, oh God, I'm not going to rant about it, but it caused a lot of problems in, with the U.S. education system. Hello there. Uh, quick question I want to ask. Um, You're going to want to stuck the sniper. He's running the game. Can you hear me? I can't hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yep. Yep. You, yep. You, you need to, uh, you need to talk to sniper. Sniper. sniper uh, yeah. The, the sniper, he's the GC of this game. He's running it. You need to go talk to him. Oh, okay. I just wanted to ask a question about, uh, mechanics. Of the game mechanics. Yeah. You can go talk to sniper. Yeah. I'll move you down to his VC. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm back from my meeting with Taiwan. It was a pretty heated one, but I think we got what we wanted at the end of the uh, at the end of the day. Um, we got we're gonna have Taiwan who's gonna make a statement. Um, France made a pretty outrageous statement saying that uh, the U.S. isn't willing to support Taiwan and that money is more important. We're we're gonna have Taiwan um, say in a statement that those statements are not true. First of all, and um, the other thing is that uh, Taiwan was not really aware of what France has done regarding uh threatening to cooperate with the communist russians they were not aware and now uh -huh. they were and once i told them this they were a bit surprised and and now they um i think are willing to work with us a bit more they just weren't aware with uh, what france has done um at the moment I, I have not gone as far right now as just to immediately demand for france to, to leave for carriers they can keep it for now that would be an issue between france and the people's republic of china if china decides to react if they want to but, station um, their, their ships there that's no issue to us but uh yes. i mean if they want to publicly embarrass themselves with such a matter well, let's let them yes yes i that's what i have said um but we, we should be getting a a clarification statement from taiwan too it's good to hear damn good job cheney damn good job yes. i want to ask your opinion on the chinese situation as you know they are having an economic collapse currently although there is a lot of hardliner support currently in their government uh, what, what do you think we need? How do we want to approach this? Uh, what is going on exactly? I I don't have the papers in front of me. If you could potentially read, read the papers to me. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Let me, let me find that again real quick. Yes, of course. A lot, a lot of papers on this desk. One moment. China's banking sector is today uh, follows also the housing crisis and crashed in China to demand a... Uh, oh, man. It's one of Charles' statements. I, I won't read this out. Uh, basically, they had a, their bank mm. collapse and they're having an economic recession. The banking sector is completely collapsed in China, and Jean Zemin is now struggling to, to basically come back. So they're in full on economic collapse right now. That, that is quite worrying as we invested hundreds of billions. In we did. You know, uh, you, you did you read about uh, what, what Clinton did with his, uh, his goddamn policy? He invested a, a hell yes. of a lot more money into China. We're, we're a little stuck in, I'd say. What do you think? I don't know if we could truly get that money back at the moment, especially if there's an economic collapse. Uh, it's really worrying that they would do this. Do we want to wasteful. double down on China? I mean, I've spoken with India about moving manufacturing there, and we're doing that. But until we've done that, do we want to double down on China? How do we want to approach this? I don't think so. I think we need mm. to see more economic stability in China before we consider doubling down. As, well, as I do know, the um, a lot of American um, companies are moving their uh, production over to China because labor is indeed cheap. But I am kind of worried that that kind of creates an issue where we are too dependent on China for our basic necessities. And too... Um, reliant on That's their true. exports. We certainly don't want that. Maybe well, Indonesia to, um... would be another good option. We haven't spoken with them in quite a while. Uh, I did have mm -hmm. a phone call with them, as you well know, where we talked about a more private economic relationship. Now, I think I'm going to go ahead and call up uh, the chairman and, and speak with him about this issue, as this is going to affect American manufacturing. i got to yeah. talk with him. But while I do that, would you mind uh, paying a visit to uh, to, to the uh, no Indonesia? As Indonesia. we, uh, I, I am interested in moving... Uh, more manufacturing there and see if they're still committed to to what we spoke about previously all right very well i, I will speak with indonesia and potentially china in the future regarding just to know how it's decided to their economy as we do have of course of course all right, well. all right i'll uh, give I'll them a call i apologize though that i see a representative from australia what can i do for you oh that's me uh yes hello um 
I have not actually spoken to you since your uh, election. Congratulations. Um, Thank you kindly. Of course. Um, I'm not sure if you were aware. We had a, but Bill Clinton and I, uh, former president, had a deal where I had purchased 15 stealth B2 bombers. Uh, they've been performing excellency in our training and testing, trying to get our uh, pilots acclimated to this magnific magnificent piece of technology. Um, I was actually coming here for two things. Um, does the Bush administration oppose Australia purchasing more for defense purposes only? Of Given course? the danger that we're uh, seeing uh, in China, and, and, and it, well, first off, let me ask you: What's your opinion on the French? Uh, their attempt to rebuild their their empire and, and try and outmaneuver the United States abroad. Do you have a, what is your relationship with the French as well as the I, the Russian state? I do not associate with the French. I think that that is imperialistic and very nationalist of them. And in the 21st century, moving into this the year 2002 now, it's I think it's disrespectful to not only everybody, like j the entire world, really. Just I, I thought right. that as humans, we were we have evolved past that, and we were able to live for the most part peacefully together, and focus more on technological advances, specifically in healthcare. Just making life better for everybody, and now private healthcare. Comes... I hope. Yes. <laughs> Wonderful. We don't want the yeah, communist policies money. getting into our countries, yeah, do we now? That's that's right. That's right. Like still be having um, us working in the god in the goddamn fucking gulags, you know? For real. Mm -hmm. All right. But uh, yes, we, yeah, we'd be I, happy I definitely... to we'd be happy to continue the Clinton policy and continue to sell you more uh, more fighters and more weapons. Australia's sovereignty and their security concerns align with ours closely in Asia, and we we wish to continue those into the future. So yes, we'd be happy to do so. Perfect. Um, also, I see that the guarantee of my independence from the United States has been lifted. Uh, Out of RP, every time there's that? a new election that happens, so I can uh, okay. I see. do that again. I was wondering if you could. Thank you. Thank you very yep. much, sir. Every, every yeah. time we get a new president or a new election, it will do that too. So I, just heads yeah, up. I figured yeah. that. I just wanted to make sure. All right. Uh, yeah, we, we'd be happy to continue this. Now, that being said, I do need to give uh, ch the chairman of China call, given his collapse of the, the banking sector there. Oh, but, yes. Uh, I, I'd just like to assure you that uh, all, all outstanding agreements from the Clinton administration will continue on as was. Thank you very much, sir. And thank you. God bless America. Have a nice day. God bless you, sir. All right. Where are the Chinese at? French get the French pro French government there. Uh, Howdy. Greetings. This is uh, this is a oh, phone call from uh, from from President Bush. Do you want to pick up the phone? Uh, yes, of course we'll pick up the phone. Oh, I will. Uh, yes, hello there. Howdy. This is uh, this is President George W. Bush. I I, I, w I wanted to call you up regarding. Uh, the financial collapse of your banks and, all, and offer my heartfelt concern regarding that. Uh, we wish to be appraised of the situation, Chairman, regarding what is going on with China. Well, as, you've might have heard, as you might have seen, China's official bank, the Central Bank of China, collapsed due, collapsed due to a stock market recession, which my, my administration is dealing with rebalancing and injecting essentially stimulus into the economy to rebalance it and hopefully the recession will end uh -huh. as uh, right now we have heard that we have heard that well what has concerned china is the french uh, navy it seems to be off the chinese coast which is a bit concerning. i can assure you we're handling that those upstart french are being dealt with and i can assure you that that, that is being handled Mm. Um, but regarding the economy, uh, we will be once we've rebalanced it. Your businesses should start making money again, Mr. President Bush. I gotta say, I understand you have no control here, but I, I, I would, I would hope that we can ensure that uh, uh, Chinese manufacturing uh, it stops interrupting American supply lines as soon as possible. Yes, we are there's, working. There's that. nothing I can do to change the policies of Clinton and the previous administration in, in building ties with you. But I, I want to assure you that uh, that we expect China to do everything in their capacity to ensure that American economic interests are not harmed with these with with, with this situation. Though I know this is outside your control. Yes, uh, we will. Yes, we will make sure that we also help the. We will make sure we prioritize helping the American companies as well. 
It's good to hear. Uh, that being said, is there any anything we could do to help you? Again, it's, it's the quicker you get back up and running, the quicker uh, we, we have continued economic progress in the U.S. Is there anything we can do? In a limited capacity, of course. Uh, mate, uh, other than investments, that's all really you could do to eat to help the Chinese economy refloat itself. Well, although we can't approve investments, I, I could theoretically see myself approving a, a small behind the behind the scenes loan to you or something. We could do that, but uh, me and Trini both feel that direct investment at this time is not the best course of action. Um, uh, no, we we were fine. We are uh, we're fine. We believe that sending money may would only may incur the wrath of hy or hyperinflation or economic issues with the Chinese money. Mm. But uh, we appreciate your concerns and that you can be rest assured that China is working on dealing with the economic issues. Good to hear. Good to hear. Now, are these goddamn malice, these, these extreme conservatives in your country still in power? I read something about that not too long back, and I'd just like to, to like to know if you still have those those extremists in your government, Chairman. Uh, the extremist conservatives, they... Uh, no, they have been... Well, they don't own... The only positions they have are in the military, or and most of them are posted in like the far west of China, or in positions that they can't really do much in. Well, that's good so. to hear. Yeah, in that case, I, I wish you the best, Chairman. Uh, anything else? Do not hesitate to call. Uh, we hope you're back up and running real soon. Yes, we thank you for your gesture of goodwill. You're well. All right, so China's having like a like an economic crisis. He's RPing, I think, like a the, like a breakdown of banking and stuff. Iran attempts to circumnavigate the NPC. Our diplomatic pressure placed upon Iran has seemed to only serve as a launching pad for the development of their nuclear weapons. We now allow this to continue. The tenuous balance of power uh, in the Middle East will drastically shift in Iran's favor. We must begin to do more to merely pressure. We need to isolate them, whatever the cost. Okay, so they're trying to go around the non-proliferation treaty, which means they are engaging in possibly getting nuclear warheads. All right, we need to speak with Cheney. Where the fuck is he at? Hmm. Who would we speak with? Historically, we spoke with the French about this, but this isn't really an option anymore. Uh, a direct contact between Iran and the U.S. just doesn't happen except for intermediaries, too. Let's see, where the hell is the Secretary of Defense? We'd realistically send him or someone to speak with him. Where is Hanger at? Oh, Jesus, the game's almost done, too. We only have 20 minutes left. Okay. Okay, well, uh, India's not in the game, so we can't do anything with them. I'd say we'd probably call Turkey, realistically. We haven't spoken with them yet, though. All right, I'm gonna go to the bathroom because I need to piss really bad, so I will be back in just a moment.
All right, I'm back. Hmm. Hello. Any news? Um, not much. We're we're quite worried with what happened in Iraq. I'm not sure if you were made aware, but the uh, of Iraqi facility was struck by an American-made uh missile. Um. I have asked my Secretary of Defense, and uh, he says that he um he can assure that it was not America who did this, but um, uh, he does not have the intelligence to know who did it. I'll, I'll, uh, well, you see, there was a meeting with with a president with a, with the leader of Israel when you were gone, and he did ask for CIA support regarding hitting the chlorine site there. I, I said we'd provide him aid, but I don't think uh, we I don't think we provided missiles or anything. The CIA director didn't say anything about that. That that is a bit worrying. Um. Uh, are, are we sure that we did not offer anything in the deal? Uh, maybe we should offer, uh, ask our Secretary of Defense when he's back. I, I think his, we uh, should definitely uh, ask about that. That being said, I do have a report here. I could show it to you right now. Evidence that there was, in fact, a, a chlorine facility. One that could be used to make weapons of mass destruction. Let me just go ahead and... Mm. Out of RP, we did get, like, a legitimate thing, so it's real. Yes, yeah, so I'm quite concerned if... Uh... Iraq is crazy. He, he says right here that uh, Saddam Hussein has vowed to destroy um, by any has means it... necessary to destroy those who are responsible. I'll show you right here. We got a report here, though. It is true that this this facility exists, and there is no other no other use he would be using this for. Now, again, I, we, we I I hope that we we didn't provide missiles for this strike. I don't think we would. The Mossad would have done that themselves. But there maybe is maybe I should go ask. Israel himself, this is pretty serious. We need to know. We need to have answers. I think we should definitely talk with him about it. Very well. I'll be on my way. Very well. All right, let me see. Where are the Turks at? I'd like to speak with Japan, but he desynced a while back. I don't think he's in the game anymore. Let me check. Let's look at our government too. We got a little bit of time. So we have a lot of political power built up. Uh, generally speaking, we're finishing like the reforms of Bush. There's not a lot in the game right now. I don't mind this focus tree, but it's not finished. And I wish they'd waited to put the whole focus tree in before they did anything. Which is a, a real shame. Despite the hot, oh my God. Okay, this fucking meme thing. This is not a good day. Despite financial mo uh, moguls or lobbyists and politicians, they have contributed to the, all are swimming the American governing offices and all asking for a bailout. Apparently the dual shock of the housing downturn and stock market crash were too much for the financial sector to handle. We're gonna go ahead and pump money into the economy and hope for the best. Expensive. And we did manage to stay up. We've got a fast growth too. All right, with all the extra political power, let's go for, let's raise the, no, we don't really need to do that. We'll keep the decentralized system. With all this extra political power, we'll go ahead and do some equipment manufacturing companies. We'll go for Raytheon. No, probably General Dynamics. We'll go for United Defense. Central American Free Trade Agreement. The Monroe Doctrine must be enforced even to this day, but we uh, must seek friendlier ties to the nation near and around the Panama Canal if we are to secure political and economic dominance in the American markets. We'll finish with that. Looks good. Yeah, our economy is not in the greatest shape, though. The, the guy who's running the game added a bunch of new mods to the game, so our factory count is really fucking wonky. We have 232. China has 145. Russia's 44. India has 94. 76 in Germany. It's really strange. The factory count is odd. We've got a mod on for this game that makes it so like we basically have tons of building slots based on tech. I don't know. It makes the game a lot different. What's the American tree look like? It's not, I've heard it's not completed. It doesn't feel complete, that's for sure. They've got some good ideas in it, like like pol individual policy with options and stuff. That's really cool. It's just missing a lot, especially economic stuff. You dropped out? Schlob, I thought you were already disconnected. Yeah, you already disconnected. 
But man, you know, you know, we were getting like DDoSed and fucked with by a group of players earlier, right? All right. Anything else you want to do before the end? Or combat forward influence a bit more? I'll do a lobbying effort. We'll extend the task tax breaks. All right. Um, I have spoken to them, and we need to be in a uh, very private room. I believe this. I got you. Though there's there's nothing more private than the White House. I could say that. So the Israelis did agree that they independently did do this. They did say it was not an American-made missile. So I believe the um, Iraqis did mi uh, misidentify the missile, but uh, they did confirm that they uh, did coordinate the strike. If the Iraqis are claiming this and provided no evidence, perhaps we should demand a investigation to see uh, if, if this is actually an American missile or not. And call them out on their own bullshit. Yes, um, as the Israel did say it was not American-made missile, so they most likely identified it wrong. On purpose say, or not, it is still not acceptable. I say we call for an investigation then into this uh, in order to clear our name. Yeah, very well. I can, I can take a meeting to um, sit down. Before you go, we uh, got to speak point. about Iran, though. Have, have you heard that they're attempting to go around the non-proliferation treaty and they're planning on mm -hmm. developing nuclear weapons? Yes, I'm very concerned about that. Um, we, we must do something to uh, try to coerce them to not. I mean, we run out of options. The sanctions aren't doing anything. They're, they are simply continuing aggressively down to nuclear policy. And I think both... Uh, Israel and in our own nation cannot allow for Iran to get their hands on nuclear weapons. So what, what do we what do we want to do here? Well, we probably should see what other Middle Eastern uh, nations' opinions on this, particularly from Saudi Arabia. Um, I know he probably wouldn't have. He probably would not be very happy to hear about this. Well, Moa, this is a, a closed door meeting. What's up, Quasar? Oh, oh, closed door. Okay, I was yeah. just uh, trying to introduce because uh, elections happened. Ah, oh, okay. Uh, I'll speak with you in just a moment. Let's just finish this real quick. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Uh, all right. Uh, in that case, uh, if you want to meet with uh, with Iraq and uh, see if we can have an investigation there, maybe sweep with the Turks or the Saudis about this, we, we got to do something about Iran. Yeah, I, I will. I would like to at least be present for the, the French. Though. I do want to hear what they have to say. All right, all right. I'll, I'll invite it back in. One moment. There we go. We'll see if he comes back or not. <laughs> we only got eight minutes Hello. left of the game. Hello. Hello uh, there. I'm speaking with Mr. Bush. You are your own speaker here. I got I got Vice President Dick Cheney myself here. Uh, who am I speaking with? Ah, you're speaking with uh, Mr. Charles Pasqua. Uh, I don't know how to say his name. Um, ah. Probably. And uh, I'm the newly elected president of France uh, of the party uh, Rally for France. We are here, or I'm here to introduce myself and uh, to see why um, America is so hell-bent on screwing our interests over. I think you know damn well what. Your, your, your anti-Israeli policy and your attempts to push America around and, and push the interests of Middle Eastern dictators of the old administration was quite worrying. Should we expect that to continue under you, President Pasqua? Uh, well, we are still supporting the two-state solution. This will not deviate with Mr. what Mr. Chirac has proposed. There's a very different way but... of supporting a two-state solution and shouting it from the rooftops and harming your allies. They're two very different things. Well, I understand this, Mr. Bush, but I'm not Mr. Chirac. I can make deals. My foreign policy is a little bit more flexible than, than that of Mr. Chirac. So... You have I something would in mind? The following. I have something in mind, yes. Mm. We could drop uh, the two-state solution and gravitate to supporting Israel if America will stop its uh, smear campaign against our nation. And if America will uh, talk with the Germans to stop exerting influence over Algeria, which is quite concerning to us. They've been engaging that's, into that's, a, that's, a, that's an issue you're going to have to work out with the Germans. We're not going to go walk off and advocate on your behalf after our tense relations currently. I think the only thing we're discussing right now is a reconciliation of basic relations. President, uh, President Pasqua, Pascal. Pasqua, I think, yes. Uh, mm. Mm. Well, Mr. Bush, think about this way. Do you want a strong ally or do you want... Uh, I thought we already had one, and then you publicly embarrass 
My administration of the UN Security Council, I understand you're a different government, but those actions were incredibly offensive to my government. Well, what about your actions have been offensive to France as a whole? You mean France our support, our continued support for our partners in Israel? You mean, you mean those actions? Yes, this actions. We were supporting, well, the, the, the different administration was supporting uh, something that is not inherently wrong. But like I said, um, I'm more pragmatic. Uh, I can make deals. And if this deal involves, uh, well, dropping uh, support of the two state solution in, in favor that France gets something out of it, uh, we are all yes. You might have had a quick word with Cheney. Was that out of RP? I'm just going to put you on hold. Can I move you to never see why I talk with him real quick? Okay, I'll pull sure. you right back in. Yep. All right, all right. I put him on hold. Cheney, what do you think about all this? And Rob's fell you too. I think that depending on what they demand, we, we could possibly um, we could possibly uh, agree to this. I think France is a very important member of NATO and it would hurt to lose them. Should we just accept this or should we push for anything else? Mm. Well, what are they demanding and have they, have they said yet? Uh, he just he just said that if we stop uh, aggressively pushing against them on the foreign policy stage and clearly feeling the pressure, they will start to support Israel once more. That's what he proposed. I say for the sake of Israel as well, we should probably accept this. Very well. Very well. Sorry about that, Pre President. Uh, I, I'm taking you off speaker again. Um, we could we could we could see about agreeing to this deal. Now the terms are you would support Israel publicly and you would stop. Uh, being aggressive against America on the foreign policy page, no more ambushes in, in the public arena, and in exchange we will stop our 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 uh, cooperation to ensure that the French people's uh, actions Hezbollah are brought to life. Hezbollah is fighting Israel. Say again. They declared Hezbollah war. is fighting the uh, border conflict. Robeso, can you go deal with this while I finish this? No, he's left. Anyway, uh, is is this is this the terms that we would find and if you'd find agreeable? For now, yes, Mr. President. It's going to be certainly arranged. For now. What do you mean by that? Well, you have to understand, my party is quite a different party than, uh, the, than Chirac's party. My party seeks putting France back in the international stage. We are practices of Gaullism, and we are, we are also always skeptic and conservative, which means... Uh, that France will be exercising uh, its influence, its global influence more and will expand onto it. And as long as America benefits France as a whole, we have no issues working with you. But let me reiterate again, if America is impeding on our uh, international or inter on our stages and our influence, we will uh, have other options uh, available to us. Basically. I understand. I want to make this clear of you. When we make an agreement, we expect it to be held. If you just wish to change us on the drop of a dime over something, uh, we're, we're, I, I don't I don't know about all that. I want to reiterate, you, you are going to stand by these terms of the deal, right? If you're changing this at any opportunity you see fit, we got we got a bit of a problem. I understand. No, I will I will stand to this agreement right now that we made, but I can't you make any again, promises right in the future. Well, well, yes. I can I can agree to this and this will not change, but on future issues and if you if America in any way is impeding onto us, then uh, support our support of future stuff that stuff that might pop up uh, will most likely change. That's agreeable. We we can accept those terms again. So we would like to have a, a public statement then for the French government uh, regarding Israel, your full support of Israel. Now you don't have to say you're against anything specifically, but I, I want a public statement saying that you support Israel's and their government. Is this agreeable? Disagreeable. Very well. We got ourselves a deal then. All right then. Uh, also, right then. Uh, then I then I think uh, you can also start to to stop this campaign that you made uh, against us as well. Uh, uh, we can do that. All right. Uh, I need to speak with George Bush. I I was going to alert the U.S. president to something happening in Iran, but what's happening? Oh, we we know. We we're we're trying to figure that out. Oh. The, we we uh, China can confirm Iran has tested a nuclear weapon. Hey, what? We need to have a talk. Hey, yeah. What? Yeah, Iran, Iran they did just uh, go around the NPT and they just tested a nuclear weapon. We got to discuss options here. We need to we need to deal with this because they 
we knew about we had uh we've been trading with them and we have noticed that they test it in if, the they, if they if they if they just if they just tested a nuclear warhead and they have a couple of those i think we need to we need we need to put intervention on the table right now dude yes uh, we gotta we need to cut off this head in 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 india will offer uh all international forces uh to uh basing rights in india uh to launch an offensive into uh this rebel state before we get any further, Chitty, what do you think? I, I, I'm feeling that we can't allow the state of Iran to have nuclear weapons. Now, we try to work with them. We tried every option. Sanctions were on the table for quite some time. I think we take this before the Security Council, and barring that, we discuss direct intervention. Now, nuclear conflict uh, if, if, if is a dangerous thing, and we don't want to obviously have anything strike. But to be honest, we have no danger in the region, and we need to cut off this head before a hundred more follow. Uh, indeed. Uh, uh, in, 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 in India just made it clear to the world uh, in 1998 that Pakistan possesses nuclear weapons uh, when we tested our nukes in uh, October of that year. Um, with a Shia extremist state, this revolutionary state having uh, possession of such arms, uh, India sees it as a, entirely un unacceptable. In that case, I, I, I think we need to discuss all options, and, and if we come to that conclusion, we need to suggest to the United Nations Assembly direct action to ensure that yes. they cannot maintain such a dangerous state of being. That being said, this game is done, so I'm going to go into my stream, and then, um, yeah, probably keep things going. Could Maybe you throughout the week. post the game talk with you? Uh, I'm yeah, I'll, I'll be right. Let me finish stream. I'll be right. One second. All right, guys, we're ending here. Thank you for the raid, Pigeon. You raided me right when I was ending, but I appreciate that, man. What's up? Uh, shout out to Pigeon. I think Stream Elements already gave you one. He's a, a cool dude. He's got a great YouTube channel. If you want to learn, like, uh, some, some cool things about Hearts of Iron, check out the guy's YouTube channel. It is really cool. Uh, highly recommend it. Thank you again for the raid, man. Appreciate that. But, yeah, we are we are done, and I'm about to go raid someone myself. So, apologies for that uh, timing on that. Let's see. Let's see if I know anyone to raid right now. Thank you, Lollipop. Appreciate that. We... I do not see anyone streaming Hoy, I know. Is there anyone to raid? Let's look. Just Fail. Just... We're gonna raid Requin. I haven't raided him in forever, and he's a really cool dude. We're gonna go raid uh, Requin87. I think he's playing with some Old World Blues, but I could be wrong. He's a cool guy. Uh, also got a good YouTube channel. He's a lot of fun. Uh, we're ending here today. Uh, I will be streaming tomorrow morning. We're going to continue the grand uh, mega campaign in the morning. We're in CK3 for that. We will be continuing. It'll be the last session of the Iran Mickey 3 game tomorrow afternoon. This game, the uh, the Millennium Dawn USA game, will continue next Saturday. Same time from 2 to 6 p.m. EST. And I'll have a YouTube video out for some time this week. Thank you all for watching. And I hope you have a good evening. I will see you later.